he wrote an open letter to him in the op-eds of the New York Times and told him that he now had like a what do you say a moral obligation to do something about what's going on because this had now happened in his store. There's no co- time constraints. You have you have as much time as you want yeah. to be able to pontificate your thoughts, Jesus, as you so desire. Yeah. Do you yes, want to know how I know that Tom Brady's going to play until he's 45? Uh, something tells me it's in that text message that came through. Because Antonio Brown just signed with the Pats. Welcome to the salt of the streets. Coming at you every week with this food for thought. Hope you're ready to eat. With everything going on in this nation, we need some information. And that's why salt need to be stationed in your rotation. With real talk and real topics, real people, real problems. Think we need some help to solve them and leave it up to Colin and the Donovan. Right, cause that's the the what, what's that? Uh-oh. Oh, let's get ready. And just like a red, white, and blue phoenix rising from the ashes of political bipartisanship, we are back to Salt of the Streets podcast. This is Saturday, September 7th, 1.27 p.m., episode 68. Boom. Welcome back, everybody, to this. Yeah, wait. I already said that part. Where am I? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. There we go. Welcome back, everybody, to the Salt of the Streets podcast, your one and only source for social and political commentary on all the weekly news, pop culture, and sports that you can handle. And the best part about the whole deal is it's all built <laughs> from the ground up for people like you and me, the everyday normal person. So come down and join us as we discuss life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and continue our endless efforts to bridge the gap between... People and information. <laughs> yes. Jeez. That was like a 90% off script. We're almost. I had to look like twice. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, as always, we're your hosts. I'm Colin. I am Donovan. And coming up on this week's show, <laughs> we're talking all sorts of stuff. We're going to be talking about Walmart and guns and the media and Brexit and it's probably some just just because it's inevitable, some general Trumpiness talk. Um. And then uh, I, don't, I think that's about it. I don't even know if we're going to get all of that because you never We're going to do know what we us, can. You know? We're going to do what we can. We just got to make sure that we explain it correctly. Yeah. And we have a good conversation. And you just simply can't put a timer on that. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> you just can't. <laughs> Which is why this era of long form conversation via podcast, especially, is so fucking popular. It's flourishing. Because. There's no co- time constraints. You have you have as much time as you want yeah. to be able to pontificate your thoughts, Jesus, as you so desire. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I got a whole wow. new understanding and like appreciation for who Bernie Sanders is because he spent two hours on Joe Rogan's podcast just talking. He did do that. Yeah, and it was really good. And I, yeah, I still think he's a crazy old man, but I got to understand him a little bit more because he just wasn't just on a stump speech. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. That Tulsi Gabbard's getting the same thing. Andrew Yang's getting that same treatment. Like you're getting to know some of these non-establishment people a lot better or even some of the establishment Do you think people. that um, Andrew Yang being in the next set of debates or the next debate legitimizes him in some people's eyes or do you think that they still are not taking him seriously well the problem <laughs> is for whatever reason he is 100 percent legitimate but i think yeah i think it it'll probably help put make him seem a little bit more legit in some people's eyes but with, there's still fucking 10 people yeah you know, at the end of the day it's going to come down to one so it's it's still hard to take him there's only His 10 people serious. on stage. There's still other people. Yeah. Bill de Blasio is not on stage, but he's still running. Like yeah, there are still people who are still going. I think I'm pretty sure that Tulsi Gabbard is still running. Yep, you know, like there's yeah, only yeah, yeah. a couple of people. I definitely didn't who mean have, to imply that. No, no. I'm just, just yeah. to be clear mm-hmm. um, that no, I know that you know. I it's know. kind of that. Uh, That's yeah, for I, everybody else. I operate on the assumption that if you don't make the debates, you don't, you don't open yourself up for that post-debate <clears throat> bump in the polls. Word. You know what I mean? So, but Tulsi's the, working hard, though. The next debates, not the next upcoming ones, but the ones after, mm-hmm. have the same requirements as far as voting and donations 
as these ones do. Mm-hmm. So if you can meet the next ones, which is 2% in like four polls, we've talked about it before, it's, yeah. you know, like 2% in four different polls and then, yeah. you know, X amount of dollars in or X amount of donations. Yeah, in individual states. donors. Yeah. Um, which most people had met, like <laughs> Tulsi and... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, not most people. Bill de Blasio didn't meet that. <laughs> no, it's uh, primarily a polling issue for yeah. for a lot of people, but for some reason, for not for some reason, for some people, it is a donor's issue. Yeah. Um, like Marion Williamson has met the donor issue and she's waiting on polls. There's only, a, yeah, there's like three or four of them that were just held back by polls. And then the rest of them were all like, you just don't have shit. So bro. if they're lucky, then, you know, there'll be a couple of scandals that come out yep. until the next debate. And then they can scoop up some of those donors. Yeah, there you go. Some of those voters and they'll be able to go into the, oh, yeah, the ones after them. You know, I love <laughs> about uh, Tulsi Gabbard's social media presence. Well, she's running her campaign is she posts a lot of like, you know, I don't know, videos about her asking, essentially asking for donors and support and stuff like that. But she does it like while she's working out. Really? And but And she does like legit workouts and she's over there fucking burning. And I'm like, dedication. This is important. Dedication. She's not stopping to campaign. She's not stopping her life, trying to stay fit and be healthy and do all that whole stuff while she's campaigning. She's you- still committed. She's got drive. Do you think that's the point of of her doing um, her ads that way is to show that she has dedication? I would lie. I would be lying if I said there's probably not a tiny, maybe subconscious aspect aspect of like sex appeal to that because you know she's we're always wearing them tight clothes and so i'm not gonna lie stuff. not that's because might be something not because i like think that tulsi gabbard is super hot or I mean, she's very pretty but not because mm-hmm. i think that she's super hot but i did think and <laughs> god I, this is i don't even know, but <laughs> i did think like well i wonder what tulsi gabbard looks you know like looks like when she works out like i've i wonder so I'm well, she's probably one of the know? few that actually can work out i've only her. seen her from here up like in in a suit you mm-hmm. know, so, and that's not, again, not because I'm like, God, I really would like, what's Tulsi Gabbard got mm-hmm. underneath that well, power then, too, suit? Yeah, but remember, she's like in the, the National Guard and stuff like that. Yeah. So she has to stay fit. She's and probably in better shape. shape than I'm in. Oh, I guarantee it. Do you think Tulsi Gabbard would kick my ass? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. She's got, she's got hand to hand combat training and, and yeah. she's in pretty good shape. So I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> she, she probably would. You know, I don't know how much uh, martial arts training you have. But, She'll probably you disarm know. me and then kick my ass. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull my gun up and say, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Tuls. This is why I don't have to work out. <laughs> I can protect myself that's, another way. That's really funny. <clears throat> mm. That's really interesting. Yeah, so we'll see. I don't remember the next... I've been, basically, like next week, right? Like this coming week? Yeah, I think week? so. Is that... Did you catch any of that seven hour marathon um, climate change debate? I didn't, but I was, when I was doing the gravel yesterday, I was listening to a different podcast and they talked about it because I didn't know that it had happened. Um, I had forgot that it happened. And I, I was like, that I wasn't going to participate in that clusterfuck anyway. It's far too long for yeah. any group. I think of they called it a to town hall, hall, right? That's, yeah. that's what they called it was yeah. a town hall. It's a, it was just a seven, it was a hour, seven town hour climate change town hall. Brought to you by CNN, your trusted name in news. That's a long time to have a single program on television. Dude. I don't, like, what else goes on? Telethons? Is that the only other thing that goes on for seven hours There's on TV? There's a reason they don't I, like, do I telethons don't. anymore. Yeah, like, I don't, that seems really weird that that would yeah. be the case. And I didn't look into it, but there was a lot of talk that the, the ratings were actually pretty terrible during it. I'm well, just thinking, well, like, it makes sense for being a seven hour long thing. Right. Because I wouldn't. One hour, two hour thing that's, yeah. that is consumable, you know, that would make more sense. But I would hear a couple expect, little clips that were great. I wouldn't expect that their goal would be to have like immense amount of viewers, but like a sustained viewership over yeah. seven hours, you know, because people are going to, if you're going to do something for seven hours, you can't be, you can't really expect people to. Be I I know I'm a terrible person. Um, no, you're not. No, you're good. You know what you're doing right now. Um, 
Like you can't expect people to be watching something for seven hours. No. I'm not going to watch something for seven hours. That's I a full work day almost. The only reason I listen to something for fucking six hours is because I'm at work, you know, and I have the ability to listen to it for that amount of time. I don't so, know, man. Is I do, she talking I do a lot of that in my spare time? Is she talking over this, or is Sometimes. she talking at the same time? Sometimes, or it's just a video of her working out. A lot of it's just her workout videos. Word, which is dope because it's just like. I don't know. I like that kind of shit because she's fucking working hard, man. She is. That she's is no it. bullshit. That's yeah. a straight fucking Instagram workout person. Yeah. You know, she's doing all this. And it's it's funny because she's doing all the same exercise that like Carolina does on hers. I wonder where. Do you think she's just working out of her house? Oh, probably. Yeah. Some kind of. I don't know. That kind of looks like a gym. Well, so that's I'm I'm but it's this tiny room because uh-huh. it's just this equipment in there. So I'm like, I wonder if there is like a workout place for congressmen, you know, like a tiny like a couple of rooms somewhere that have shit in them that they can work out, or if she's doing this on base, you know, mm-hmm. and there's like a small workout because I'm obviously there's gyms and shit on base, but yeah, like if there's, there's gotta maybe be like a, some some gym facilities over at Congress, I would imagine. Hashtag where does Tulsi work out? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so, like, I know I'm interested in where uh, Tulsi Gabbard does these workout videos because she would say like, the world is my gym. The <laughs> the world is my gym, as we would say in Hawaii. <laughs> she <would> say, <laughs> That's oh a, my that's a God. joke only people that watch her talk that, and listen to her talk will understand. That is awesome. <laughs> she, ha- she has a tendency hilarious. to like slip in and out of a thick Hawaiian accent. It's which is very interesting. Hilarious. Right? And I'm not sure if that is to be fair, we can account to be fair. It, we can account it to either her like getting rid of and not You know, like, she's trying to get rid of her accent, but, like, getting rid of her Hawaiian accent, or it could be that when she's on Joe Rogan, her (laughs) Hawaiian accent is much thicker than it is when she's on a Democratic debate stage. But (laughs) I know, and I'm not fucking judging anybody, you know, it's I will say from my experience in the military, right, that was a thing that, I don't know, you just don't really think about when you're doing it, because it's just not on your mind. Yeah. But once you get in and you get to, like, your first unit... You could have like a dozen different accents and dialogues or dialects at one unit. And yeah. it's just kind of like, oh. And then like after people have been in for a number of years, some of them, you know, most of them will lose a, you know, the strength of their dialect a little bit because you all just kind of balance each other out and do the whole thing. Yeah. But it's like there's some people that they'll lose it all together. And then every now and again, it just, it slips in. It'll and kind of like back. what they're saying and stuff like that. So I wouldn't doubt with her military pass like that, that might be what that is. Might be 100% authentic. But it doesn't take away from the hilarity of when it happens. We love you, Tulsi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she's good people. <laughs> so today we're having another grab bag show that's going on. Um, you know, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. You can uh-huh. check it out on our uh, personal social medias. You can follow us uh, on I'm at Salt of the Street on Twitter and at Alpaca underscore Donovan on Instagram. And he is at Big Bird Offie on both of those things. And you can find all this on uh, saltofthestreets.com as well as our Salt of the Streets Facebook at Salt of the Streets, our Instagram at Salt of the Streets, our YouTube at Salt of the Streets, where you can find all our videos. And you can find our podcast anywhere that you can find a podcast. Boom. I wrote a, I put up a new blog post yesterday. So that would make that Friday, the 6th of September. Go read it. It's it's a little lengthy, but it's all about, uh, you know, some of the experiences that I get when I'm hanging out in the woods. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and a review. If you screenshot it and send us a picture, you will get $5 off your first t-shirt purchase because we are awesome. So do it. There you go. That's do it. it right now. So what Drop do you want to talk doing. about first? We have like some, like, I don't know if you said already, but, you know, guns and Walmart and... Mm-hmm. uh New York Times podcast because it's just getting worse and worse all the time. It is, man. Um, you know, we have like some Brexit stuff that we're going to talk about. We have some regular Democratic candidate stuff that we're going to talk about. It's awesome. Fucking Beto O'Rourke, I will take your assault rifles from you. Did you listen to his fucking, his thing, the On the Trail with Beto O'Rourke? You got to listen to Oh my to God, the, no, I You got to listen to the On the Trails. Yeah, because I got like three of them. I gotta yeah, yeah. Them. And there's a Biden one too now. 
They talked about his sad personal past, Joe Biden. <laughs> I feel so bad for Joe Biden. Well, like I mean, uh, he has kind of a, like his a wife and his and shit, daughter yeah. dying, and then his son died, and it's like a whole. Oh yeah, it's pretty tragic. It's a whole slew of terrible things. But hey, one of these trending hashtags. Sorry, this is random. Is a uh, hashtag Trump fears Yang. Ha! So, that's the Yang gang at work, bro. There you go. Fifty three point six thousand tweets. That is Yang's number one main weapon is his social media following. It's his his Yang gang, hashtag Yang gang. They have done they've blown his presence up on social media. Yeah. So you can't avoid him. I and, like that he says uh the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's really funny. I mean, he's not wrong. It's he's, he's not, not wrong. and that's the thing is that like it's a funny thing, but it's also like I mean, that's pretty on the money, there it you is. know. <laughs> Asian man who likes math. The best memes are they speak to fundamental truth. And that's what that is. That's why he says it. Yeah. Okay, so what do you want? You want to talk about the uh, the, the shit podcast show of the first? daily? Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about the contents of the podcast first. This is what's the episode of the daily? It was from Thursday. S- yeah, Thursday, right? September fifth. Um, I'll find the name of it. Oh, that's and right, because they do do names their podcasts. Yeah, yeah. So, so this particular episode featured a conversation between the normal host Michael Barbaro, Barbaro, whatever Barbaro. You say his name, yeah, and a financial columnist from the New York Times. So financial columnist. He's not a um, journalist. He's a columnist. Yes, which they means made, he does not work in the newsroom. They made that is, very clear. Yeah, well, that's why I say that. About he said it one time. In the middle of the episode, and it took less than a second for him to say that. But they did. He did put it out there. But yeah, his name's Andrew Sorkin. Uh, he's he's pretty involved in the social medias. Is he related to Aaron Sorkin? Aaron Ooh. Sorkin's a director, right? I would doubt it. Or like a. It he's a nice. he's a director, right? I want to say we're gonna look it up though. I'm pretty sure that Aaron Sorkin is a director. Aaron Sorkin is an American screenwriter, director, writer. producer, and all sorts of good stuff. Plays To Killing Mockingbird. There you uh, go. Few Good Men. Yeah, Few Good Men. The West Wing. Family. Is Sports there a night. family tab on there? Uh, relatives. Just spouse. Julia. So probably not. Bingham. Then. Yeah, probably not. Because they're both of... Of note, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they don't really look that similar. He could be like an older brother or something. Born in 61. What is... Aaron Sorkin... Or an Andrew Sorkin's a pretty young gun. Who... What does Andrew Sorkin look like? Andrew Sorkin is a interesting individual. He looks like a dork. He looks like a I, dork. I, you know, you know, like your stereotypical, like... Nerdy looking dork, Andrew Ross. You know, I mean, look. Oh at yeah, no, there's, there's no way they're. He's a finance geek. Yeah, that's what he is. There's he's no f- way they're. Related. Yeah, no, <laughs> not even close. So this episode of the Daily is the podcast that we're talking about as a New York Times Daily podcast, as the name would uh, you know insinuate. The or would <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's called Walmart enters the gun control debate. There and you go. This comes the day after Walmart. Uh, as a company and the CEO said that announced that they would stop selling pistol ammo as well as ammo for short rifles, uh, short barrel rifles, short barrel rifles. Yep. Um, and that they were going to stop selling handguns in Alaska because that's the only place they still sold uh-huh. handguns and that they no longer wished for people to open carry in their stores in states where that is legal. Washington State being one of those states, which I think is interesting that a lot of people don't know that. Right? Like that I didn't know that. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a long time to know that. Part of it is because it's super rare. Like people just don't really do it for I don't really know why. I imagine you go back east, it's not as rare. I'll tell you that much. Oh, and I imagine (laughs) that here it's rarer for at least one reason because you're going to come across an uppity person who's going to fucking say something about it. 
you uh, know, who's going to make some type of comment about you carrying a gun in some type of fucking area where they don't feel like somebody would need to carry a gun, you know? Um, and that may have, and I'm not trying to like mischaracterize anybody, you know, and that may but have, I think that's an apt assumption of what would happen, yeah. especially in our area. And it may have gone away a little bit, especially as the shooting start to happen in places like Walmart and shit like that, you know, mm-hmm. where they're happening in, just in random different places. Um, I think that argument kind of loses the, any type of small validity that it did carry before. Mm -hmm. Um, But, but as long as you're concealed carrying, you're fine. Right. And we talked a couple, last week, I think, right? Yeah. The last week or a couple weeks ago when Mm -hmm. I, I went to the sheriff's office to talk about like some things I was confused about and that, like the signs, at least here, right? That's all he could speak to is like here, but, um, the signs that are on buildings that say like no guns, that there's a difference between a, a sign that says like by law, you cannot carry a gun in here, like in a bar or in a recreational weed store, you're not allowed to carry guns in there or in the bar area of a restaurant, you're not supposed to yep. have a gun in there. Um, anywhere where you have to be 21 to be in there, you're not supposed to carry a gun. So. I, but there are other places, you know, movie theaters and shit like that that's like have signs that, that says no gun, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like a fucking a gun with a red circle with a line over it. And I was like, so what's the deal with this? And because if you look online, there's people that on different forums that are like, oh, it has to have it has to have it in English and Spanish or it has to be a certain size or it has to be on every ent- entrance or exit or else it's not legitimate or this and this and this. And I don't know if it's different in other places, right? Mm-hmm. So if it is different, I'd love to hear if someone knows factually that it's different in wherever they live. That's not Washington or Kitsap County, but mm-hmm. here the signs are not legally binding. No, you know, so you can conceal carry into this place and you just, you know, no one should know about it if exactly. you're doing it properly, right? And if, if you if somebody sees your gun, you're doing it wrong. Right. But if you and if you open carry in there, then you just stand for them to ask you to not have your gun in there. Or if you if they ask you to leave and you say no, then you're trespassing, but that's like a whole nother deal. Right. How many people have so, had to explain that to over this last week? Yeah. At least a dozen. Yeah. And it it doesn't surprise me, but it's Scary. It's almost like a new set of rules, you know, not for everywhere. Yeah. Um, because there's still some places, it's like stadiums, right? Like I asked about that. Like yeah. you still like at the clink, you still can't carry your stadium mm-hmm. there or your gun there. They don't like that. Um, but and if it's, Walmart put into place like a stop and frisk system, like you still like you wouldn't be able to conceal carry in there then. Yeah. You know, because that's still a legal policy for them to do because they can make their own rules. I would just stop it's going just, to Walmart. Yeah. Which sucks because I used to not go to Walmart for different personal reasons that, like, I just don't like. First of all, all the employees there are unhappy. Like, that's at least in our area. The employees there are unhappy. They're fucking getting after each other. They're at each other's throats. They don't want to help you. It's not a pleasant experience to shop at Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. So, for a long time, we didn't. Now, for economic reasons, we do shop at Walmart. I know know the feeling. But certainly, if they were to start fucking... Like they had like metal detectors or some shit, and I like I was not a like not able to carry my gun in there. I would stop shopping at Walmart. Yeah, I'd be like, I'm like, I'm this is this. stupid, right? Yeah. So I have a I have a brand new, not sense, but I have a new. Uh, we'll just we'll say I have a brand new sense, a renewed sense of uh, wherever I go now, like evaluating how soft a target this is. Everywhere I go. Yeah. You know, and it makes me uncomfortable that I don't have a gun yet. And I'm working on that now because it's just, you know, you never fucking know, man. I've been in too many situations where I wish I was. Yeah. And now, especially like when I went hunting that time and you're always like worried about fucking big ass grizzly bears or something, wolves or something that will fuck that you might up. fuck you up. Yeah. You know, and you know, yes, you have a rifle with you, but it would be. <laughs> You're you're also carrying, you know, a sidearm as well. Yeah. And I would like to have that feeling more now. Cause it's 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 a great stress relief. I'll just say that much. Well, and I told you and I when Jake and Morgan were here, you know, we talked about that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mm-hmm. feel more in control of situations that I'm in. You know, it's not a sense of like power or like, mm-hmm. you know, like I you know, no one's gonna fuck with me. Like it's not anything like that. You know, you just you have more options available to you in different scenarios yeah. i feel more in control because there are more things i can do in any number of experiences that might happen you know a larger number of experience of experiences now so mm-hmm. it's 
Yeah. And I think that, I mean, the thing about uh, what this this episode was really about was just that right there. Yes. It was just the fact of Walmart has changed their policy. And this guy, financial columnist, the New York Times, Andrew Sorkin, um, he apparently has been using his influence and, if you will, power at the New York Times. Platform. At, uh, yes. A powerful platform, yeah. right? Because uh, the New York Times is a powerful institution. And he's been using that to push his advocacy as, you know, a anti-gun activist. And I think that became crystal clear by the end of this episode. Certainly. And it was extremely discomforting to me. Yeah. Not on the fact that he is that way himself. I can totally understand that. And he seems very, you know, straight-minded about it and reasonable about his beliefs. And, he, you know, I get where he's coming from. I just don't agree with him. But I think it's a... This is empty, right? That is empty. Okay, sorry. But I think it's it shows more to the state of inner workings over at the New York Times than I think is healthy. Well, especially because, and not to interrupt you, but especially because he said at least once that he wasn't trying to make it so people couldn't buy guns. Yes. But then continued to lay out a series of ideas that would make it harder for people to get guns. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So He's, he like, said the goal here is not to stop people from buying guns. He said these are legal products. The goal is to identify suspicious purchase activity and then to stop it at the register or report it after that to law enforcement yes. so that they can take a second look at it. Suspicious purchase activity. So we Which would problematic number one. Let's take but. just one second. And we we told you the name of the episode. We would recommend before anyone whatever, before you yep. formulate an opinion on what we're saying, that you go and listen to this episode of this podcast, which is like roughly 20 minutes long, maybe 25 minutes long. With take the ads. time. Yeah, with fucking ads. Listen to it and then take again you know consider again what we're saying and it's not yes. that you don't have to have listened to it to listen to what we're mm -hmm. saying but it will give you obviously a different probably a different uh perspective on what we're saying now if yeah. you understand exactly it's always what we're best, talking about you know colin has a shitload of have, quotes here so he's gonna i do have some good pretty quotes good, but, but even then the, the problem with quotes is it it doesn't it's impossible to get the the full breadth of the context without yeah. doing it. And it's a short enough podcast. I don't feel bad for saying that. I mean, you should be listening to it anyways, because as rough as it's been it's the last few good. weeks, it's still pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Besides, I mean, you should know what the New York Times is talking about. Yes. Um, but anyways... Uh, so Aaron Sorkin, when he, that's mm -hmm. Andrew Sorkin. Andrew Sorkin. When I just now, all I can think about is Aaron Sorkin. Um, <laughs> when he is talking about identifying suspicious purchasing activity, right? Mm -hmm. He, I think he said for like a year, he's been writing a series of articles identifying different players as he described it in, you know, what is the, the gun dilemma what uh you know just the entire gun industry yeah really. whatever the deal is right but players into into like the active like problem that's going on like yeah. the mass shooting epidemic like people so, he's he identifies yeah. as in a roundabout way holding some portion of responsibility towards these shootings and these all this terrible and in craziness these people he's talking about banks that invest in gun companies he's talking about people that provide materials to gun companies he's talking about people that sell guns people that advertise for gun companies people that invest in gun companies individuals um and also credit card companies who allow people to purchase things mm -hmm. guns and gun yep every accessories from their, from with their credit cards suppliers distributors retailers credit card companies credit card networks credit card processors banks investors and anyone essentially that is tied in some fashion to one penny worth of some transaction to somebody picking up a gun. So he's writing articles on how all of these different people in different industries and groups of people 
have a hand in the mass shooting epidemic, if that's mm-hmm. what you want to call it, yeah. that is happening in this country, right? Which I think in itself is a supremely disingenuous message to be putting out into the world. Oh, it's you know, dangerous. That all of these people have a hand in these people being mm-hmm. murdered, you know, because you invested, like you said, at least some money in whatever's going on here, or you helped yeah. people who, you know, had this going on. And that's when he was talking about Walmart, right? He yep. was saying that he told the CEO, what's his name, Doug McMillan? Yep. Um, he told him that he now, he wrote an open letter to him in the op-eds of the New York Times and told him that he now had like a, what do you say, a moral obligation to do something about what's going on because this had now happened in his store. Yep. Right? I don't, I don't know. That's not a, that's not a line that connects for me. You that's know, that's just not something that pure subjective activism that this happened in your store. So now you are morally obligated to do something to try and curb this problem. Yep. Right. So, and he phrases it in a fashion that makes him feel like he's extra important because he is the CEO of this store where this happened. Right. He is in a, a uniquely powerful position to have an effect on the overall conversation we're having about guns. So yeah. he tried to church it up a little bit, but really he's just saying, you also have a moral obligation to do this because you're in that position of power. Yeah. And this, it sounds very intersectional, doesn't it? Yeah. And I don't think that I, similar mindsets, um, similar, similar themes in how you correlate certain ideas. Because, yeah, because to me, it, it doesn't, him being the CEO of a company that is the largest, happens to be the largest, re- I don't know, what the, they are the largest retailer in the world, right? I think yeah. is the case. I don't, that to me country. doesn't oblige him to do anything. Mm-mm. You know, he doesn't, he's not obligated to do anything, even if it's happening in his store. Yep. The nothing that happened in Walmart, no policy in Walmart caused this mass shooting to happen there you know yeah. so i don't understand if walmart had sold a weapon to this man without uh you know a background check and it he would have failed it and then he got it anyway from the walmart and then he bought ammunition there and then he loaded the clips and shot a bunch of people in the store right afterwards yep you've got a fucking problem because something happened in your store as a result of policy or oversight or whatever the fuck you know that this dude was able to do this. Yep. That doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm not sure what factor of the El Paso shooting obliges anyone in Walmart to do anything. And I, that's not, I'm, so let me stop here for a second, right? Let's talk about the actual implementation of these rules at Walmart, right? Okay. I don't have a personal problem with them doing this, right? I don't agree with it. I don't yeah. think that – I don't personally think it's the right thing to do. I think that it's going to cost you money. Not enough money that it's going to fucking – you're going to really care, you know? But what do they say in here? That they do 20% of the ammunition sales now and they're going to cut it back to 10, right? It's like six. It's single digits, right, six. yeah. So, so that's a bunch of money you're going to lose, right? And people yep. shop at Walmart. They buy ammo at Walmart because it's cheap there. Yep. And now people even, I think – I would wager there's a bunch of people who aren't going to buy ammo there at all because they can't buy all of their ammo there. You yep. know, if you have a hunting rifle and you also have a short barreled rifle, you can go to Walmart and you can buy a couple of boxes of five, five, six, and you can buy a couple of boxes of 30 out six and then go the fuck home. Now you can't done. do that. Well, it makes more sense for me to go to fucking Bass Pro Shop and pick up more dollars because I can just get everything there all in one sweep. And I'll pick up some 45 at the same time and we'll call it good, you know, yep. because I used to have to go to Sportsman's anyway to get my handgun ammo because they don't have it at Walmart, you know, or they only have certain. I tried to buy some 10 millimeter at Walmart and they only had hollow points there. So, well, that is unfortunate. So yep. I have to go. I Well, now I can't buy there anyway, but now I had to go somewhere else anyway. Yep. But. Yeah, I was trying so, for a while. I would every time I went to Walmart over the last like month or so, I'd be looking to see if they had any six five Creed more for my rifle, but they just don't carry it because I just knew that it would be cheaper there, and I wouldn't have to go all the way to Silverdale. Do you yes, want to know how I know that Tom Brady's going to play till he's forty five? Uh, something tells me it's in that text message that came through because Antonio Brown just signed with the Pats. God damn it, Casey. If you're listening to this, you are the luckiest son of a bitch on the face of the planet. Jesus Christ. You piece of shit. 
Thank you, Commissioner Gordon. Ryan from work just helped me. Jesus Christ. I have to thank him on the show. Thank you, sir. You just helped me break this news on the podcast. Oh, dog. That is... (sighs) That upsets me. Yeah, that fucking blows. Um, And it's Casey. No, he's... He always does too good. He doesn't need that. Yeah, and I, but I do have. Um, oh. That's awesome. That's do you have I, somebody. On, I on have him in the Bennick League. Oh, I word. have Antonio Brown in the Bennick League. Um, so that's pretty. Antonio Brown has agreed to terms with the Patriots. Jesus Christ! They didn't waste any time, did they? No. Wow. Jeez, man. Because that, that was just this morning. I mean, we were going to talk about this in sports, um, but it was just this morning that he was cut from the Raiders. So yeah. Belichick had to just be on the phone. Um, He's like, He wakes up, yeah. he checks his phone all crusty and angry like he always is, and he goes, Ugh. Hey, call this guy, making yep. him a deal. I, want I him wonder, let's see if it tells me in these things. If And then we'll get back to Walmart and Guns Talk. But this, is, this is important. This is breaking so. news. Yes. Yeah. And by the time breaking you hear news, it, you'll news. hear on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus Christ! You know what will be fun is we're talking about it this week, right? And then we're going to talk about how case balls came through with some stupid ass points next week when we go over our uh, yeah. how we did this weekend. One um, year, fifteen million dollars, nine million dollars signing bonus. Well, it's a lot better than zero. And it's at least it's not he didn't sign a three year contract, you know, it's yeah. just a one year. So we'll see how long he ends up there. But so wow. Yeah. So when it comes to Walmart, right? Because I was yep. talking about talking to Casey about it earlier this week, and we had a little bit of a disagreement because I told him, like, I don't agree with this stuff, right? But I respect the CEO of Walmart because he did something. Right. I respect the fact that he did something because not that I feel he's morally obligated, but he Mm -hmm. is in a position to try and play some factor in what's going on. Right. So whether or not I think it's the right thing, right? No one knows what the solution is to this problem. Mm -hmm. We just know what the problem is and we can identify different things that might help, but no one knows what the, you know, what are they called? The panacea. What is going to, what is going to fix this? Right. So even though I don't agree with it, I don't like it. I think that it's silly. I think it's going to cost them money. I respect that he did something because Mm -hmm. he's in a position to do something, right? Because we have a Congress that is is choosing not to do something, whatever it is. Mitch McConnell's like, if I have a bill that I know President Trump will sign, then I'll put it up, which is, uh, you know, whatever the fuck, right? That's his normal cop out. But I appreciate that he is doing something, right? Okay. Even if I don't agree with it, I appreciate that he's in a position to do something and is like, fucking, I don't know, but this is what I got. This is what I can do that I think will help to try and remedy this situation. Uh-huh. You know, I respect that. I appreciate that. And I don't hate on him for that. Like I said, I think it's silly. I don't think it's going to behoove them. I don't think this is the answer. Uh-huh. I think it's going to cost you money. I think there's an ideological tinge that wins for you in the media that you've made this decision. Obviously, because the New York Times is going to spend 25 minutes fucking championing for you for having made this decision, you know, which however many people every day are going to download this podcast and listen to it. They're going to tell their friends about it. We just fucking told however many people, however many listeners we have that they should listen to it Mm -hmm. you know so it's it's doing what they wanted to whether or not that's his goal you know or his goal really is to affect change it's that kind of uh any news is good news it's either a side effect or a win Mm -hmm. you know whatever it is or it's a side effect and a win Mm -hmm. um like i said i i I appreciate that he's doing something whether or not i agree with it whether or not i think it's a good idea Mm -hmm. makes my life a little bit harder because now i have to conceal carry not that i open carry generally anyway if i wanted to now i can't you know yeah and i definitely can't buy ammo at walmart because not that i have an ar but if i was gonna fucking get one now i definitely can't get it there you know i can't buy nine millimeter for jordan's gun at walmart anymore i have to go and buy it somewhere else which is Whatever, but I think it's going to drive people. I think to buy ammo online. You know, mm-hmm. it's because you can get it cheaper online than anywhere else. If you're oh, going to, yeah. if you're going to buy five boxes in a store, you might as well buy a fucking case of it online. You know, because it's going to be an extra fifty bucks, and you're going to get ten times as much ammo. You know, or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. you'll so, get a, like fifty percent value. It's, I tell you, a box of ten millimeter for this is like twenty five, twenty eight dollars just to go to the range. Mm-hmm. Right? I get a box of a thousand online for three hundred and fifty dollars. 
that's a fucking market savings. A box of fifty, right? Is yeah. is like twenty eight dollars. Yeah, that's like a thousand. So much better for three fifty online. You know, man, I wish I could find that kind of deal for my gun of good quality ammo, and it's yeah. not like super cheap shit of like good quality yeah. ammunition. That tells you how much fifty box. Yeah. Twenty rounds, forty bones. Yep. Oh, that's yep. just one range trip yep. for me. Twenty rounds. Yep. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, now let me ask you this because this got me thinking about couple things yes so i'm gonna ask you how you feel about this situation for two different companies here three the first one uh and this i think they brought it up during the episode so it's a good kind of segue pivot point um when dick's sporting goods announced that essentially they were doing the same thing they were making their gun purchases i, I think they bumped their age Lim or their age restriction to 21 as well. You got to be 21 they, to buy a gun at all. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, they pulled all the, they wouldn't sell AR 15s anymore. So now they just sell shotguns and hunting rifles. They said before, and they did know in this podcast that I guess the justification for Walmart before was not shootings, but was for whatever market reasons, which I think is fucking weird because I have to imagine that an AR at Walmart is cheaper than an AR at fucking Sportsman's, you know? So well, I don't know what the market reasons would be that people wouldn't be buying ARs from Walmart. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't make sense. That's, but back after the, the Stoneman Douglas high school shooting in Parkland, that's when Dick's pulled the trigger on what they were doing. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to, because I think they we even sold, talked about it back they had then. They sold that kid a shotgun the yeah. year previously. Not the gun that he used in the shooting at the high school, but had sold him a gun previously, mm -hmm. in which they just were uncomfortable with, and so they yep. stopped. So, know. how do you feel about that situation? Same, essentially the same thing. Glad that they did something in an effort to try to stop. Um, yeah, just you a, know, just it's, to do something. It's a, yeah, it's a similar, I do, I feel the same way that I don't, I don't agree with it. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I think that, I don't think that's the solution. Um, but I've, I applaud you for doing something that you feel is going to, you know, cause like I said, I don't, I would never tell anyone that's, I would never say as like a, a public statement that like, that is not the answer. You know, mm -hmm. I would not say that. I say on this podcast, in my personal opinion, I don't think that in individually is the solution, mm -hmm. but but until I, we know what is right, the solution, but I nobody's also, wrong. Yeah, and I so I'm not saying yeah. they're totally wrong because it's it is a factor that may possibly yep. help the situation. Could so be. so I'm not at all trying to demean it by saying I don't think that it's the answer. It's just not what I think is the solution. But I don't have one, like I said, I don't have a panacea for it. I don't have one individual thing that I think will solve it. So that's part of the reason that I think it's a good thing, just in the sense that they're trying something. You know, and if this okay. happens and it doesn't change at all, then we'll know that that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll know that it's something else. But if it starts to go down even a little bit, then we'll know we're like, well, it played, a, it may have played a factor, you know? Yep. So, so then let me ask you about does this, when I bring this company up, is there a correlation that gets directly tied in your mind to kind of similar situations yeah. with what Dix and Walmart did? Nike, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Do you, do you have different emotions and feelings over that compared to this? Um. Do you think they're apples and oranges? Do you think there's a, a correlation that runs true between both? Do you mean like... In almost, the, I almost want to know in what the way that their sponsorship. I mean that. No, no. In so, what I think that you mean, right, mm -hmm. is a comparison in the way that a sponsorship with or of Colin Kaepernick would be, could be Nike trying to do something about race inequality in this country. You know, Whatever if, it was, if they that, think that yeah. that is the key. Um, would you even tie those two things together? This is a purely subjective question. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just thinking. Um, I think that it's possible. Yeah, I hadn't mm -hmm. considered it before. Um, but I also, you know, as I laid out like in my blog post most recently, that was a while ago, but that was mm -hmm. the most recent time that we talked about it, that I don't think that 
the way I don't think that his message is in, is disingenuous, but I don't mm-hmm. think the way that he carried it out was the correct way. And I think that it got all fucked around and messed around and, you know, all mm-hmm. kinds of different things. Um, and I think that it's possible that that is what Nike is doing, mm-hmm. um, but they're not doing it in the same open way that Walmart is, where they're saying we're doing like directly this because of this, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I think that people, some people viewed it, I viewed it, you know, as they're sponsoring Colin Kaepernick because he's a big figure right now in the sports world, even though he's not playing yeah. professional sports. Like, he's a, the, the bottom line on that one might speak for itself. Yeah, he's a big figure. So, and it's been proven, I'm not like scientifically or anything, but it's been shown that even if he's not playing, people still are going to wear his shit. They'll still buy things with his name on it. I so, saw Kaepernick jersey at the draft. Exactly. So, that fucking Isaiah loves that guy. So, <laughs> um, so if, if they're going to have a clothing brand that has Colin Kaepernick's name on it, people are going to buy it. Because they support him, they support mm-hmm. what they think his message is. They support what his message really is. Whatever you know, yep. they support what he stands for. So where, where Walmart now might stand to gain a new consumer base because yeah. they have become politically or yeah, you know, yeah. activated. Now, I see, think that's possible. There are some people that they do stand to gain as shoppers because mm-hmm. they're doing something that they agree with. You yeah. know, they're like, oh, Walmart's not even going to sell fucking you know assault rifle ammo anymore and i so i'm just gonna shop at walmart now you know because i'm proud of them for doing that so i want to support them now see the reason i ask you this is because when this happened i started to have a bunch of mixed emotions right because i think i i look at it a little bit i looked at it much different than you i think um because you looked at it i think more of like a this is somebody trying to make a difference or something you know they're trying to do do something uh, do you like this? I time? drink beer and I know stuff. It's what I do. That's, I mean, that works, man. That's apt, right? Yeah, it totally this, was a, this is a Father's Day present for my wife this <laughs> that year. That is so great. She had her sister, uh, Aaron, make it. So oh, shout out. Shout perfect. out, Aaron. So it's custom. Homemade. Yep. It's that custom. Is Showing off my fucking tan and my sunburn. You know what I'm saying? Oh, dude. It's actually not too bad. Like, no. my chest is a little burned, but it's no, my like, back That's a tan too, for me. That's yeah. not a burn for yeah. me. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> two days, it's going to be fucking gold. So. Mm hmm. You look like a it. fucking Persian god. Yep, exactly. Um, so what? Oh, sorry. What was I saying? The uh, oh yeah, the yeah, difference sorry. between how you started to talk about that in the fashion of essentially being glad that Doug McMillan, the CEO of Walmart, is in a position to try to do something, and he's doing something. I don't know that I would say glad. Okay. Right? Not glad, but I appreciate it for what it is. There I appreciate that go. aspect of what's going on. I'm not I'm not like glad. I'm not like fucking fucking ain't right, Doug McMillan, you mm-hmm. know? But if if someone were to if I were to be out for fucking drinks, you know, and someone were to ask me what I thought about this, I would say I appreciate that he's doing something. So I appreciate it, right? Yeah. I'm not happy about it. I'm not glad and I'm not like championing it, but I'm I appreciate mm-hmm. that portion or at least that aspect of what he's done. You know, this decision, maybe not what he's done. But this decision, you know, I appreciate that aspect of it, that he has done something because he's in a position to do something. Okay. Because I come at it from... That may be like a very... I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, no, it, might, no. it may be a very minute difference, you know, but I, it's... Well, I don't think a, so. You know? Because the way I kind of looked at it originally when I started to think about this was how I actually respect him for putting, uh, realistically, his money where his mouth is. Yeah. And he's willing to put that into practice in regulation, whatever you want to call it, in his business. He's willing to take a cut in right. sales of however much percent yeah. because they're trying to do something, because they want to do something, because yep. they care, because whatever their justification is. You and, know? and the first kind of correlation that popped into my mind was Chick-fil-A. And how they are not open on Sundays because of the CEO's, you know, the owner's religious beliefs. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want anybody working for him on his Sunday and all this, right? And so, and I, well, I was, I've always been a fan of Chick Fil A in that particular context. I'm like, I've That's never good. eaten I'm, a Chick Fil A. I'm glad yeah, that you're missing out. 
Am I? Because it's is it that good? It is so good. Really? Yes. There's a reason. There's also there's lines of protesters and lines of people waiting to get food. So anytime I've ever seen a Chick Fil A, there's been a line like ten cars deep, and I'm like, I'm not gonna wait in a ten car line for Chick Fil A. So if I were to, I think if we were hungry and to be looking for something to eat and come upon a Chick Fil A with like a fucking two or three car line, like let's fucking try Chick Fil A. But I'm not gonna wait in a ten car line for that's like the coffee stand by by the bowling alley in Silverdale, the All Star Coffee. You know what I'm saying? It's like seven cars each side. Fucking stupid. I'm not going to do that. I am just not, and that's not an infrastructure problem. That's, that's just people are dumb, and I'm not we're willing talking to do about that. coffee and delicious chicken sandwiches here. There's no comparison. <laughs> These are apples and oranges. <laughs> I, coffee dude, and sandwiches, bro. The, the one thought I have whenever I see those giant ass lines, those stupid lines for coffee stands, I'm going, there must be some hot chicks working there because it's people will be. come back for it. Because if you're just looking for a latte, I hate to tell you, but 90% of the actual latte stands we have scattered throughout the the county and the towns and stuff, they're all basically going to be the same. Yeah. You know, they're totally different than like a Starbucks, and they're usually 10 times better than a Starbucks latte. Yeah. But at that, I mean, you just, most of them use the same beans and shit too. I mean, it's like, it's like a weird thing. I don't know why people are are so devoted to their... They're specific ones, and we'll spend that much time in a coffee line. It's weird. Because I know if I see a big line at that one, and then I on keep going, the next. I'm like, on the next one, block and a half down, there's another one. Oh, there's a spot in there. I'm going to go in there. Yep. You know, it's there's going to be another one. It doesn't are, make any sense to me. If you drive from, say, like, the Sonic and Palsbo yeah. to Silverdale, you pass three... And yes. then there's the All Star Lanes one right there, and that's it's four within the stretch of 15 minutes. Yeah, that is wild. Yeah, 15 minutes for anyone who's not from around here. 15 minutes. There's four like individual, not Starbucks, is like independent coffee stands. Yeah, that's plus at least one Starbucks in there because there's yep. one on in Silverdale on the corner up. Yeah, from and there's All-Star one coffee. right in Paul's boat by the Walmart. <laughs> so there you go. So there's fucking yep. So there you go. There's, there's six so coffee many. places, not Within including restaurants minutes. that you could probably. Oh walk shit! Into there's the one right up on go. Finn Hill too. There's the one right. Th- oh my god! There's so many places to get Seven. coffee. We have a problem. Seven. I have a coffee right here, an iced coffee that I made this morning with in my leftist tears hot or cold tumbler, courtesy yeah. of the Daily Wire. Um, so I'm finally going to get this thought out. Sorry. I was like, why the, what the fuck are we talking yeah. about? So when I first heard this, right. And yes. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I like this. This seems dumb. And it seems, you know, I mean, I get it. And then I started to immediately think about Chick-fil-A and how that owner stands on personal principle and makes policy for his company. And I was like, I feel like now if I hated it on Doug McMillan for acting on something that he thinks and wants a policy he wants to put in place yeah personally through his company i say if i dislike that because of what the change is i feel like a hypocrite because i I like the fact that he has enough uh belief in what he's doing to implement it store-wide and take a profit loss yeah I, i i give him respect for that i don't agree with it but i give him respect for that and so i feel like we kind of came we kind of ended at the same place, but we came at it from different angles. Yeah. I just thought about it. I, I thought about it more of like a personal We aspect, tend to do that. I think, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird because we end up in the same place where we just take different paths to get there sometimes. Yeah. So now we can talk more about this podcast, right? Because yeah, the, in general. The thing that they talked about in particular on this podcast or that Andrew Sorkin chose to focus on was credit cards. Yes. Right? The paper and trail. And... How X amount of these mass shooters had purchased their guns with credit cards and therefore um, may or may not have been able to conduct these mass shootings if they did not have a credit card that gave them access to purchase this gun. Yeah, because you kind of assume if somebody's putting it on a credit card, they can't afford to pay cash for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, which um, is not unreasonable because, as we talked before, guns are fucking expensive. Several hundred dollars. And right? they're still and the cheapest part of it you're going to buy. And I would feel comfortable assuming, right? And this, mm-hmm. is a, this is an assumption, right? That most people, and maybe not even most, but a lot of people um, 
who purchase their guns do so with a credit card, even if mm-hmm. they do have the money, right? Because um, it's a good way to build credit. Ooh, right. Buy your right. things with your credit card, pay it off at the end of the month. Done. You know, it wouldn't be a strange thing. Yeah. Um, Just and like I did. So, and we, we did also, um, I mean, partially because we didn't have the money because we both bought guns, right? And it, it cost us That's a fair a sh- amount of shame. money to buy both of us guns and ammunition all at one time, right? Um, but a lot of people who have the money for it, I feel like purchase them with credit cards. You can get points for it. You get fucking miles for it. You, there's all different things, rewards that you can get on a credit card for spending money. Even yeah. if you spend, Two thousand dollars on on a you know a rifle a scope a bunch of ammo doing whatever and then the very next day you pay it all off with a lump sum two grand that you have in your account right there you're still yeah. gonna get all the points and shit you know for like for that you know for that purchase mm-hmm. um, but then it's not gonna be sitting on your credit card right yeah. so I tried to look up this morning to try and validate this assumption I tried to look up this morning how many guns are purchased with a credit card and I could not find that number couldn't find the figure yeah that right? sounds um, like well because I feel like isn't that that should not be public information so <clears throat> so I also then found a bunch of forums where people are talking about how they don't purchase guns with credit cards because they don't want anyone to know that they've purchased a gun with a credit card, so they'd rather just buy it in cash. Mm -hmm. So that's why I change my assumption from most people purchase them with a credit card to a lot of people because I there's however many people, X amount of the gun buying community that is choosing not to buy them with a credit card on purpose because they don't want it to be tracked they would rather buy it in cash that's your your hardcore second amendment libertarian (laughs) so one of the things they talked about in this podcast is that your credit card doesn't track what you're purchasing just how much money you've spent and at what store you've bought it so if you're buying a gun from a plate like we bought i bought my pistol from sportsman's right Mm -hmm. so it says sportsman's on my credit card it doesn't say what i purchased it just says sportsman's x amount of dollars however the fuck and then what day there's all kinds of shit you can buy for a thousand dollars at sportsman's warehouse all kinds of shit very there's a hundred things you can buy to add up to a thousand dollars at sportsman's warehouse you know five things you could buy i just mean there's guns you know what i'm saying so that shit's expensive so there's nothing in my purchase no, at Sportsman that would indicate that I if you buy it at a store that is called fucking, you know, Homeboy's Guns or some shit, there's a pretty safe assumption that you bought a gun or a gun accessory at this store that's mm-hmm. called Homeboy's Guns. You know, yeah. just by of just by virtue of the name of the place that you purchased mm-hmm. it at. But well, shit, it's um, some weed companies, right? When you think about them, yeah, the actual name of their business on the business license does not match what the business is up on the sign. And it, you know, it could be like, you know, I don't I don't I just keep wanting to say chronic because that thing's right there. But, <laughs> you know, but you know, they could have, you know, Volcano. North Northwest Growers LLC or yeah. you know, it could be fucking anything. Well, Falcana is like, you know, that's a fantastic weed brand that that's there's nothing mm-hmm. in the name Falcana at least off the top that would indicate to you that that's a yeah. cannabis brand, you know, yep. but it is. Um so it's, it's like the old day, old old days, probably Pre you growing up because you're such a young gun, but back in the old days when there wasn't such a thing as Pornhub, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you, there was websites that you would have to like pay to subscribe to, yeah, and like there would be like notifications on the website and say you know we'll show up on your credit card as this. Well, that way, like people couldn't get you know there's couldn't a, get popped for something like that. There's a scene in Superbad. Yes, there um, is. Where they're talking yes. about trying to subscribe to the porn website that has the least dirty sounding name. Mm-hmm. So he's like, it's like what are like Perfect Ten, like Perfect Ten. That could be like a bowling website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really funny. Oh. Um, no, and I guess I never considered that because i figure i mean when you're a teenager and you're like watching porn up you're like we are going to be an adult if you're going to have a subscription to unless you're stealing your parents credit card but then they're going to see they have a porn of subscription um so i never considered that it might show up as something different um on your credit card but oh, yeah. that might be the case and i've never I, I don't own any porn subscriptions myself i wouldn't be embarrassed to say if i did i just don't uh there's no, so much because, free because porn on the internet the that's belie- like that's because of things like 
Pornhub and yeah, shit. Like, right, it didn't right. used to be like this. Yeah, it's, it seems unnecessary to me. It's, yeah. But, it's a thing kids um, growing up in today's world don't ever have to think about. Yeah. That like we did, us old school kids, you know. Chances are, you know, even if someone paid for it at one point, you can find it for free somewhere oh, yeah. else. You know? so it's, yeah. Um, it's the fucking internet, man. You can find anything you want. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, if you do go to Pornhub to subscribe, it does show up as something, or maybe you have the option for it to show up as something different. I don't know. I never, yeah, I never thought that, about it, you know, but I bet that's why, like, Ashley Madison, you know, doesn't, yeah. isn't cheat on your wife.com. It's, it's fucking <laughs> AshleyMadison.com. Yep. That could be, uh, that's a perfect, any number I think it's of, probably a perfect example. Yeah. Any number of different things, but in reality, is a website made for you to have an adulterous relationship with, generally another married person so yeah that's very interesting i never considered that well and the thing that honestly scares me about what he's talking about here is because that's what he's talking about is tracking everything from the yeah the supplier of the gunpowder and brass or whatever right. to a, an ammunition manufacturer or like the parts the steel that makes up the parts of the the gun that they put together at the manufacturing plant right. and like so, all the way down to following all the money trail from every purchase that you possibly could buy closing getting a, yeah closing that gap we just talked about where your credit card doesn't show what you've purchased but just that you've purchased something at this store for yep. x amount of dollars so this person Andrew Sorkin is placing forth the idea that like I said it would close that gap where now your credit card would say you bought a fucking a Glock 20, you know, for X amount of dollars from a sportsman's warehouse, and you bought five boxes of 10 millimeter ammunition from this brand. I don't fucking remember what it was, you know, and you bought one box of hollow points and you bought, you know, fucking targets and mm -hmm. this and this and this, anything that's going to go towards a purchase, right? Because he's the situation that he puts forward is a mass shooter who purchases three or four different guns and then goes to a different low from different locations and then goes to another location or goes online to buy ammunition and then it goes to another place or another website to buy drum magazines yeah. or more magazines or whatever so they're spreading out their purchases which is something that people do that that is a thing that people do you yeah know? it's called being a crafty consumer e get right. the best deal for everything <clears throat> you can like i said i can't buy a box of a thousand rounds of 10 millimeter ammo at sportsman's warehouse for 350 dollars but i can do it online for 350 dollars mm -hmm. and there's sites online that are or in the store i can get for cheaper online there's holsters yep. i bought my holster online because they don't sell it in the store it's a custom-made holster that comes online right so i bought my gun in the store they're like hey do you want a holster do you want this do you want this no i got it i got it handled right there's there's all kinds of shit, mm -hmm. you know, that, like I said, there's, uh, you know, different fucking lights that you can put on your gun that it's going to be cheaper online. There's sites that are going to be cheaper online, different oh, yeah. things. No that retail make, markup. Make more sense to buy them at other places, you mm -hmm. know? So, and that's, I'm not trying to dilute that that is something, a tactic that people who intend to carry out character, terrorist or, terroristic Te thank you terroristic thank you. attacks yes terroristic attacks or mass shootings that is a tactic that they use but it's also something that regular people use to mm -hmm. spend the, the least amount of money because even though i got a credit card i'm not trying to rack up to the fucking limit just because i have it you know i still want to spend the most reasonable amount of money that i can to get this purchase because i'm not trying to splurge you know that's why i didn't buy a fucking sig sour whatever the fuck that's a glock is a nice gun but it's not the nicest gun that you could buy it's not the most expensive gun that you could buy no, you know it's, it's, it's the best affordable guns that you can buy you and know they, what i'm saying they do like their fucking manufacturing standards are so fucking high yeah it almost like I'm, I decided the other day that when I get my handgun, I'm going to get the Glock because it is the best made, best priced pistols that you can buy. Well, Otherwise, the, you're just paying for brand names almost and, and a again, different design. Not to, not to get into like gun talk, but one of the appeals <laughs> is, um, is like it can't, can't be drop fired. You know, it uh -huh. like it's the way that the safety on is constructed is that the firing pin is pushed out of the way of even if you have a round chambered, the firing pin is pushed up out of the way. So if you are to drop it, it won't hit the striker to fire off the round. Yep. So it is the hammer may fall, but it's not going to hit the firing. It, pin. Yeah. So I'm not going to say it's impossible, but is 
extremely, extremely unlikely that that is ever to happen, that if you are to drop your pistol with a round in the chamber, your Glock with a round in the chamber, and yep. it will fire. It's, it's, it is designed to prohibit that. Right? And as a... That's an appeal. Yeah. Um, for, and as a gun you carrier, know, you have to understand that that might be something you would do in certain situations where you would chamber around and then yeah. want to just have it at the ready because you may not have time to draw, pull back, right. chamber around, and then fire. You know, like when I was up in the mountains. That's, we roll with, you know, we don't have a round chambered in our rifles, but we do have a round chambered in our yeah. sidearms because if you're going to need it, you're going to need it right the fuck now. You don't have time a, to fuck around. It is a um, huge split. I'm not going to like 50 50 split, but it's a very split ideology in the gun community about carrying one in the chamber. There's a lot of people who argue that there's no point in carrying if you don't carry one in the chamber. There's one people, uh, not one people, there's another section of people that don't like to do it because they don't feel it's as safe. There's all kinds of risks. There's all whatever. If you don't have a holster that has like a full trigger guard, then you stand like accidentally, you know, discharging your weapon just because it's there. There's all kinds, there's all kinds of different theories as to what the different thing is. And I feel that in reality, the correct thing to do is whatever is most comfortable for you. If carrying with one in the chamber makes you seriously uncomfortable, should not be fucking doing that. You should not be, but I'm not, I'm not here to tell anyone how they should and shouldn't care. I'm just, that's that's whatever is comfortable for people. Personal choice that you would have to make. Yes. Because, like I said before, I would only do it in certain situations. Yeah. And in this situation, was that was one of them. Because I don't want to... I'm going to be pissing myself if there's a fucking grizzly bear over animals the bushes are fast. next to me starting going... Ugh. Yeah. Animals Ugh. are fast. Because that's... No thanks. I don't want any part of that, dude. <laughs> Mountain lions that you hang know. out in trees, you nope. know? Nope, 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 That's nope. That's fast. Those are fast animals. They're heavy. They drop quickly. That's, That's a, also why I have the outer frame pack, because that bar right there goes up. It rides right above my neck. And word. Any little thing as inconsequential as that might be, it makes me feel better. Yeah. If they go for the back of the neck. There's a That's little they something in do. the way. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. they usually do. It's just like you watch a, a lion tackle a gazelle on planet Earth or something. Yeah. They're going above the back trying to bite down on the neck so they can break the spine. Right. And then game over. So, as, you know, similar to being different ideologies or different ideas about carrying with one in the chamber, there's different ideas. Different feelings about this idea because along with his idea of closing the gap of purchases, right? Yep. The other thing he talked about is credit cards just not allowing people to buy guns or gun accessories with them, yeah, right? He, brought he used up PayPal. PayPal, like uh, the Cash App, Apple Pay, like a couple of different things that you cannot use online to purchase guns or gun accessories, right? To which is something that I did for some reason, um, and maybe if I think about it more, I'll be able to – to explain it more rhetorically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, I feel differently about companies like – no, not for some reason, right? I feel differently about PayPal and the Cash App and Apple Pay um, limiting that than I do from credit cards limiting that, right? Whereas, it kind of almost runs counter to their their ethos of why they exist, right? Right, right. Yeah. A credit card, when it went – the idea of a credit card, right, is for you to make a purchase for something you don't have the lump sum money for, but you can pay for over time, yep. right? That's the whole idea, And they just right? charge you a tiny little percentage, so they yes. make a little bit yes. of extra money for loaning you that, money. That is the whole idea of a credit card, right? Like microloans. Yes, right, yeah. a microloan, right? Because a loan you're taking out for a purpose, right? Either mm-hmm. you're paying off debt or you're starting a company. You're, there's a reason you're taking out a loan for a lump sum of cash. A credit card is <laughs> That's like- what they call a line of credit. There you go. Word. You know what I'm <laughs> like, saying? So just walking myself and, right into this. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, and, that's that makes less sense. And a credit card is generally used for either like smaller purchases, you know, or like there's a lot of people who pay for everything with a credit card and then pay it off with their paycheck, right? Because for the same reason that you would make a large purchase, there's all kinds of benefits. There's points you can get, there's miles. Yep. Not to call it your we, credit score. The dude Shit. who works right behind me, right? Young man who got married, he um he does his things though. He pays for everything with a credit card and then yep. pays it off, you know, or most of it off every week when he gets paid. Just however much he spent that week pays all that off when he gets paid and then makes other payments to just keep it up. Yep. He hasn't paid for a flight in like since he got a credit card or that credit card because he's getting stupid fucking miles all the time, you know? That's how you do it, man. And so that's, there's, 
I don't like to do that partially because I racked up a bunch of medical debt that we had to pay off with the credit card. So I have debt that I'm paying off. Yeah. I don't really use my credit card at all. You know, we got a credit card. And so, okay, before I continue with that, right? Because when I was talking to my friends about this earlier this week, because when I was talking about it, about, you know, credit cards not letting you buy guns or gun accessories, I'm like, oh, this is fucking stupid. You know, I'm all up in arms about it. And my two of my friends, one who has CPL, but who is a pistol license, but no pistol, and one Mm -hmm. who has CPL and a pistol, they're like, well, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. right? They're like, well, that, that doesn't seem that weird, you know? And I'm like, well... Hold the fuck on though, right? Like, I because, get it though. And I, I understand why you, why if you didn't, if you have a gun you didn't buy with a credit card, you would be like, well, that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? Yeah. But again, when my wife had the experience that caused us, I've told the story a bunch of times, so I'm not going to go into it again, yeah. right? When Jordan had that experience that precipitated us buying these pistols, I didn't have a thousand dollars because we're in a single income household. We're raising a baby. I don't have a thousand dollars. Yep. For us to go and buy pistols, for us to buy ammunition, and for us to carry on with our lives, right? That's going to take me a while for me to save up a thousand dollars for us to do that. Either that, or I'm going to compromise on the quality of the pistols that I want to purchase. There's going to be something that gives or takes there, whether it's when I feel like I need it, yeah. or you know, the quality of the pistol that I'm going to receive, which yeah. is not something I want to to necessarily give up on. You know, no. to you know what I'm saying. So I don't feel that if I have the means on a monthly basis, right, to to put aside what would take me, the payment that would be equivalent to me saving for the pistol, right? Mm-hmm. And I have the credit score for this company to feel, and credit score and credit history for this company to feel comfortable giving me that money. Why should I be hindered in what I choose to spend that money on? Yeah. Because, because X amount of people who do carry out mass shootings use credit cards. I should not be able to buy a gun because those people use credit cards to buy their pistols mm-hmm. or their guns, their or their ammunition, their whatever. Yeah. That to me is not an equal comparison, you know, mm-hmm. that or or justification as to why I should be limited in my purchase because people who carry out mass shootings happen to use credit cards when they do it. You know, that also doesn't say they didn't have the money at the time to pay for it in cash. But if they think they may die, then fuck what the fuck does credit card debt mean to me anyway, right? Yep. And that's and I'm not saying that that it doesn't make total sense, right? But carrying on a mass shooting doesn't fucking make sense it is, you know? So yeah. that there uh, so, I was yeah, surprised I have like, by that, right? So I have like a weird like I'm conflicted about that. Because it's weird to think that a credit card, like the credit card companies, yeah. the, you know, Visa, MasterCard, like these in financial institutions yeah, have, it's kind of scary to think they have the ability to just do whatever the fuck they want. For the most part, they're very heavily regulated, of course, but like, um, I think by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah. And, uh. So they're, I mean, they're very heavily regulated. It's the same people that regulate like, banks and shit like that. But yeah. as a campaign finance company, like it feels, it feels weird. It, it feels weird to me that as a private company, they can't make the decision to do, to, to not want to have their, their money, which it's, it's their money that they're loaning you yeah. spent on this type of product. <clears throat> and I get that. But at the same time, like you bring up, you're, you might be fucking over a lot of people. You and might be feels- indirectly barring them from fulfilling their Second Amendment right. And whether or that. not it's a legitimate argument, people will make that argument that by doing that, you are limiting people's Second Amendment rights, right? No. So whether or not it's a legitimate argument, that is going to be used by people who are who are ideologically driven and who are trying to change people's minds. They're going to use that as an argument or an attack on the Second Amendment, right, to do that. And this is not – I'm not saying this is something credit card companies are looking to take up because I don't have any evidence to say that it is. I mean, maybe slightly that Walmart did it, you know, that there's – yeah. The precedent has been set that it's possible, right? Mm-hmm. But there's no evidence to me that it would indicate that they are doing that, right? And, but different, like, than a They've retailer. They've chosen to not advise gun companies, yes. previously financially advise them, but they're not stopping people from purchasing yeah, weapons, the, guns, or gun accessories. It's like City Citibank and, and America, yeah. I think. Bank of America, yep. I think. Yep. Um, yeah, because that was about the... Stoneman Douglas time, I think. I think so. when they came out, either that or that. Sandy Hook, but yeah. I think probably was Stoneman Douglas. Yeah, but I mean, 
But that gets weird because, again, we're talking about financial institutions, so, yeah. which are all privately owned. Yeah. You know, and the I, same with the fucking credit companies. It's, it's do, really weird to think about that. I do feel that it will hinder people from purchasing mm-hmm. weapons. It, it will. I will. I de- think definitely – take a hit on the gun companies, on gun mm. manufacturers, on oh, yeah. gun retailers. They are going to see a drop in business. Because again, a gun is, a pistol is a good pistol, right? It's five, six hundred dollars. Like that's for mm-hmm. a, not even, again, not a decent, an ex, a, right, an expensive pistol. That's a, that's a, gl- that's a, a Glock, a yeah. nine millimeter Glock. You know what I'm saying? Is like, is five or six hundred dollars. Depending on where you get it, you can get, you know, sales, whatever the yeah. fuck, right? But I think like if you look on Sportsman's, like they're about six hundred dollars. A Glock, mm-hmm. a full size Glock is about six hundred dollars, yep. you know? And that's like, a lot of people don't just have six hundred dollars, but if they had an event similar to like Jordan and I had, if they got mugged on the street, yeah. they're like, "Well, f- shit, man, I want to be carrying a pistol now because this happened. I got all my money stolen, and now I don't oh, have yeah. any cash. Right? All I have is my credit cards. I want to go and buy a pistol for self protection. Yeah. This dude stole all my money. I have to eat ramen for the next two weeks and, till I get paid. Right? But I have a credit card that I can go now buy a tool that will." Not allow that to happen again. And maybe that's a very particular example, right? So even if all of your money isn't stolen, but you have some, you have some type of event that happens to you that precipitates you wanting to buy a pistol to protect yourself. And we've talked about why it shouldn't before. you have the right to do that? Why shouldn't you have the ability to do that if you have been given a credit card? You have the financial means every month to make that payment. Mm-hmm. Why should you not be able to purchase a gun? That we seems ludicrous to me. Back when we were talking about like the general state of the middle class and stuff like this, like yeah. The majority of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency. That would be a case right. where you're like, well, I just don't have the money for it right now. I'm going to put it on my credit card. Maybe I'll pay it off next month. Maybe I can. Maybe it'll yeah. take me two months, three months, six, whatever. But obviously, this feeling that I have where I want to go buy this now, I need to go buy this, is important enough for me to spend the money and take the time to pay it off. Yeah. And so, like, it does... It does, I think, raise a broader question about these these privately run institutions in general and about how much power they have when it comes to their 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 societal power. You know, I mean they're they're during the conservative kind of like shadow banning scandal and all yeah. this stuff, there was uh, allegations that certain credit cards would not fund to this conservative group or that conservative group, and it's like, well, what if that's the only you know credit company I'll, like that you can get the money from or spend money through or yeah. whatever it is? I mean, what are you going to do? You're just depriving people of of money that everyone else has access to, and like just you know, so their power can be life altering. <laughs> yeah, like in the very real and literal sense. And so it's it's it kind of worries me that with a lot of these major institutions getting more socially active and politically active that we might start to see two different politically aligned entities in the same <clears throat> industry because there will be if if that was to happen like if tomorrow every major financial institution out there decided that they're they're full they're going full bore progressive. They're doing all these things. They're not going to give money to X amount of people. And essentially half the country is cut off from financial institutions. Yeah. There will be new ones that rise up that do the opposite. From private investors, yeah, who start and, yeah. new capital companies. Absolutely. I think Ben Shapiro talked about that this week that he when oh, he really? was talking about this. Yeah, that he said um when he was talking about Walmart and then I think he was talking about this guy and, you know, credit card companies not allowing people to make these purchases. He said, mm-hmm. people like me would privately fund new credit card companies for people to buy guns. There you if go. for whatever reason that happened, there would absolutely be a new wave of pro Second Amendment financial investors that came forward and said, oh, well, fuck that then. We'll yeah. start a credit card that's for guns. This is specifically for guns. Use your other credit cards for everything else. This one is just for you to go and buy a gun. We're going to give you a special rate. You know, you're going to get special points when you buy guns. If you buy this gun, you're going to get this. You know what I'm saying? That will happen. But in that period before that happens, there's going to be a shitload of people that can't buy pistols when they need them or feel like they need them. There's going to be people that die because they can't protect themselves. And I'm not trying to appeal to emotional status by talking or like emotional 
Yeah, your emotional you know what I'm saying? twinge. Yeah, whatever. I'm not trying to appeal to that. Even by using myself as an example, right? I use myself as an example, myself and my wife, because she's the one that had the experience that precipitated this, right? I use us as an example because we, I feel, are representative of a vast majority of the reason why people begin to carry pistols when they didn't in the beginning, you know? Yep. When you and I met... I was in favor of people carrying pistols if that's what they felt like they needed to do, but would never have done it myself and told you that. I'm (laughs) not going to carry a pistol because I don't think that's necessary. I think that's stupid. It's a waste of whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. That was four years ago. And we're at a point now where I don't go anywhere without my pistol. I carry it. When I go outside to water my fucking plants at night, I carry my pistol with me. When I was outside doing the gravel yesterday, Jordan and Dax went to the store. I'm home by myself. My pistol's outside with me because if something's going to happen, I want to be prepared. I don't want to have to run inside and go and get it and then come back out here. Doesn't do any good. I'm not actively scared of someone running up on me in keyboard. But the people at El Paso who got shot that day weren't actively scared of someone coming in and murdering 22 people. You know what I'm saying? All those people who – and I use this as an example, right? Because just yesterday, I'm on my way home and I'm driving behind someone who has a sticker on their car that says that they are a survivor of the Las Vegas shooting. Whoa. Right? So those people, those 55 people, 58 people, whoever – however many people who died – in Las Vegas, didn't expect that they would be shot at and possibly murdered watching a fucking country music festival. Yeah. You know? Because nobody does. That's one of the reasons I'm uncomfortable with being prohibited from carrying a pistol in a music festival. That makes me super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Especially the Garlic Festival shooting. They have fucking metal detectors there where you can't carry a pistol in there. Guy cuts a hole in a fence, carries a a rifle in there anyway, and fucking shoots people. You Mm -hmm. know? That concerns me. That uh, having... Before it didn't. Four years ago, it didn't. I didn't think about things like that, you know? And I don't know when exactly it changed, but it certainly around the time that Jordan had that incident, I think about that now. When I go places, I think about that. You talked about that, thinking about soft targets. When I'm places, I think about if someone comes in there. If something happens while I'm there, I think about that, you yep. know? Maybe that's just part of where we are as a nation. Maybe it's part of being a father. Maybe it's part of being a a grown adult man now. Maybe it's part of carrying a pistol all the time. I'm sure all these things, all these things play a factor, you know? Because as you live, you grow in experience and those experiences shape, they, they shape your views. But I don't feel that there's any reason that my financial situation of being a father in a single income household should hinder me from being able to protect my family in a way that is effective. A chicken in every pot, a Glock in everyone's hand. I just, I don't think that that is something that should hinder me from doing that. I don't think so. I don't. And when you think about about the Second Amendment as a right, you know, and you do, see, this is the problem that with, that I, one of the major problems I have with Aaron Sorkin here and his ideas about this. Taste that when you take a break. uh, It's because he is, essentially advocating for a totalitarian style surveillance state you know not the the stereotypical cameras on every corner but while saying that's not what he's saying exactly and he's like well no you can still buy them but we're gonna know that you bought them and we're gonna know every single company that helped you buy that in some fashion yep you know because it's scary because it's a suspicious purchasing history because purchasing a gun at one place, a p- or a sight at another place, a holster at another place, and your ammo somewhere else is a suspicious buying history. When that's a pretty standard purchasing technique, yeah. not just for mass shooters, but suspicious for people who whom? own firearms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It begs the question, suspicious to whom? Washington Apple. That's really good. Delicious, right? Stupid good. Can of organics. Can- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and these sense. are much cheaper than they used to be. Much cheaper than they used the to be. The full gram? Yeah, the full gram was like, I think, 32. Oh, dog. It's like really good. Used to be you know? like up in the 50s. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Way cheaper now. A half a gram used to be like 32. Dude. Yeah. And now they're like 23 for it's half It's getting gram. stupid. Stupid cheap. You know? It only makes sense. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It takes a very serious thing like fucking five hours of straight gravel work for me to take something other than straight fucking cannabis. Yeah. You know? So, so, so just to, because we'll, we could pivot off of this, I think. Yeah, no, um, I don't. So, segue topic. Yeah. We, we talked earlier, I think, mostly on the pre show about that vaping thing. Yes. Um, so, about the all these faulty like, black market THC cartridges that yeah. are making people sick, because that's actually what's going on. 
Yeah, the in vast case majority you guys missed the pre-show. We, the real bottom line answer is we don't really know what's going on, but but that's in, a factor. Yeah, and yeah. these in the especially the factor of these people that seems are dying, to be a factor. It that seems to be the the main common thread so far. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, you know, we hear about where these people are getting sick, and it's like New York, which I know just passed a. They passed some legislation that made it much more uh, cannabis friendly. I but think Michigan just passed it. Not to interrupt you, but just so. passed recreational or um, no, no, they medicinal. banned flavored e-cigarette juice. Yes, they did. Yeah, and like partially, and that's one of the reasons I thought that it was just e-cigarettes that was causing this is because they're like, oh, we're doing this because all these people are dying, you know. When it doesn't seem to be also because of the children thing, because these flavored ones are like geared more towards kids, which so, so check this, right? When yeah. I was a kid, they banned flavored cigarettes for the same, the same deal that they were because yep. they were just more appealing to children, right? Which I can understand. I think is, I will, I yeah. think is silly, but I, I understand. I you know. get it. Because nobody but, wants fucking cigarette flavored e juice. They want no. fucking Fruity Loop flavored e juice. Part of the reason whatever, you get out of cigarettes because they taste like they shit. They taste terrible. Um, yeah, I don't miss the, the flavor of cigarettes. And you know what it really is, man? It's the fucking vape crowd. It's it's the reason I got away from my giant ass stupid box mod to these little jewel things. Just people thought you were a douche. Because it's so douchey. Yeah. Dude, I mean, but the flavors are ridiculous. I mean, they're really good. Don't get me wrong, and it's nice to be able to have this that night assort that nice assortment of a flavor and stuff. So you can actually, yeah, you know, if you're gonna, because you're vaping not for not to vape, which is a problem in the other vape crowd. But if like you're one of these people that sports Jewel, you're not vaping to vape. You're vaping to get nicotine, right? And so you, that you don't have to smoke cigarettes. Where if you're blowing these giant fucking clouds, that would in five minutes you wouldn't be able to see in this giant ass room. You're doing something else. And I noticed Which that. stupid. I noticed that when I quit vaping, right? Because I smoked cigarettes from like when I was like 16 to when I was like 20 or 21, right? Mm-hmm. 20, right? And then I was vaping uh, partially because I didn't like smoking cigarettes. I wasn't enjoying it anymore, but I was fucking addicted to smoking cigarettes. So I started vaping and like when it first was kind of getting big, you know? And so I had like a big battery, but still like a regular tank just so it would like mm-hmm. last longer. And then when I was quitting, right, I was like moving down in nicotine level. And then I was like, oh, well, I'm like down to three. And so I'm just like going to stop, you know, a bunch of my friends are like, well, why are you doing that? Like, they make zero. I'm like, wasn't that the whole point? Was for like to like to vape, to quit smoking, and then to quit vaping? I'm like, well, yeah, but like you know, like all oh, you know, whatever. And like you can just get zero and blah blah blah. I'm like, but then what's the point? Yeah. Like then I'm just wasting my money on fucking vaping, which is was to quit smoking anyway. Yeah. You know, you're you're feeding the most addictive part about yeah is, quitting nicotine is and it's like the, the habit forming yeah. part of the and, you know the act of doing this, the act of like inhaling something and exhaling something that's the hardest yeah. part about quitting to smoke it's the nicotine fucks with you physically for up to like a couple of weeks right it it'll inhibit your sleep it's 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 really hard to get off nicotine it's not an easy addiction to break but you can do it without it killing you pretty simply yeah but it's the other habits that go along with it you know a lot of times back when i quit smoking cigarettes originally um I would just, I'd be popping toothpicks all day long and chewing yeah, on toothpicks. Yeah. And I had like that oral fixation you're trying to hit. And eventually I ended up saying, screw that. I want the nicotine back. So I started smoking. Oh, video baby Dex. What up, dude? Look at that. Oh, he's, he's so expressive. Yes. I love it. What up, dude? He probably just woke up. He's like, yeah, he looks sleepy. He's feeling his teeth. That's what <laughs> he's, he's like, doing. Yeah. He's been sticking his tongue out like that. My boy that has two cool. teeth now, just for everybody. We're watching a little Snapchat video of the baby. Sorry oh, for the podcast interruption. Buddy. That's but. so cute. He's like, hi. He what looks like a real person now, right? <laughs> like a real person. Oh, yeah. He's not a baby anymore. He's just yeah. a, he's a little tiny person. I know. Isn't it crazy? that You hit that stage. Yeah. He's a little person now. I know it. <sighs> Weird. Eight months this month. Eight months. It's crazy. Oh, that is so wild. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, Sorry we already that. talked about it in the pre-show, but that the but you had the something else you things, wanted to say about it. I did, and now I'm not really remembering it. Well, we were talking about the artificial, oh, the black so market. All these cartridges. little 
you know, breakout points where they're having these health problems and stuff like that. Yeah. I haven't seen, like, especially because they're focused, they're trying to kind of focus it, they're offhandedly on the THC part of it. That's the one thread they seem to be able to, the commonality they can pull between most cases. Which doesn't. Which is that bad thing. Which is not going to be the problem here. They're no, not because dying we from have being not too had, high. Yeah, we don't have that in Washington or Colorado or yeah. California. So, you know. This thing is fucking like 90 something yeah. percent THC, this distiller right here. That makes a lot of sense. I'm not dying. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. could do, I could blast as much of this thing as I could in one day and I still wouldn't die. Yep. And I'd be coughing a lot, but I wouldn't die. You because know, because it, it, it was. It's not the THC. It was regulated in a fashion that you got a good organic product at the end of it that is not going to kill you. That good shit. Imagine that. So you allow these things to float around on the black market for a while and start getting into some shit. And I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, I had heard about people, kids mostly, like, refilling jewel cartridges and, like, you can put weed in there and shit. I had heard that, but I guess I had never, and maybe this shows that I'm an ignorant fucking parent now, but I never considered people refilling them and then selling them or making their own THC cartridge. I just never considered that. Like I never, I figured it was just like a perk that when things were legal in your state, then you're like, man, now we can get those cartridges. I never considered there would be a demand for them somewhere else to the point that people would start making them themselves to, to sell them. I just never considered that. And I don't, Mm -hmm. again, maybe that's ignorant, but I fucking, I smoke weed all the time and I never considered that. That seems really weird because, so funny. and maybe it's because Washington was one of the first places to legalize it, but like that wasn't a thing when I was, but when I couldn't buy it in a store or when there wasn't stores, like you yeah. were buying wax and shit off the streets, but people weren't making cartridges for you to buy, you know? Yeah. See, it seems so weird because there's so many other ways to get like a, a smokable version or a consumable version of a distillate. Yeah. Without having to try to worry about electrical, you know, flow and this this weird because all this complicated, are, you know, setup that runs these right. little things. Like I don't want to fuck with that. <laughs> well, and it's not as convenient, but if you can buy if you can find wax, right? Whether it's legal or illegal, you're buying it off the street. If you can find wax, BHO, CO2 oil, right? THC oil is what I'm talking about that comes in like a little jar or on a little parchment paper or whatever. If that's what people call dabs, just for people who don't know, right? If you can get that, then you can buy on the internet a pen that you can put that in with yeah. like a little coil, and you can yeah. buy that on the internet. You it's know, that's pen. legal, right? Because theoretically, you're putting, you know, uh, tobacco on there, and you're using that. You can buy ones you can burn weed with. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But yeah, you can buy one with a coil that you can just put oil in it and do that because yeah. before. These were a big thing. That's what I had was like a little, it was like a little glass bulb that you screwed onto, you know, your battery. And then you put a little oil in there and then put the little bulb on there Uh and you were taking dabs on just on the go. Yeah. You know, they used to have those back before weed was legal at all. You could find them in like head shops. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This is for your tobacco. Exactly. So that's like, that is absolutely a thing that you can purchase. So it seems weird. That people would be so driven to the cartridge thing. Because for a while, I didn't even like that. And this this is not like weird weed talk. You know, this is like a thing. Like, it was like a preference. As someone who smoked weed all the time, I preferred the little glass bulb thing because it was like... It was a real dab. You know, it wasn't the same hit, but it tasted the same. And it was like your oil that you were smoking. And Mm -hmm. this was like a separate purchase and like a whole other deal. And I have to have that and blah, blah, blah. And now this is more convenient, you know, to take places and to, I got a fucking kid. I don't want to have fucking weed and wax and and a dab rig and a fucking whatever. We have an industry that's regulated in in a manner that we don't have to worry about buying poison. Right. Because it's a legalized thing. Yeah. So I'm going to in the room for like a second. I got to try to find the wife's purse. She That's needs okay. me to send her you, something. Can you give me some more water? Oh, of so, course. Thank you very much. Right here, I'll fill you up Drinking right here. Look at okay. this. Okay. Glug, glug, glug. Word. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Dog. Thank you. I drank all my water today because I'm not drinking beer. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. Well, I took fucking. Oh, these, yeah, duh. So that's why. Yeah, there we that's go. All right. I'll finish that fucker off for you. No Whatever. Worries. What do you want to do, homeboy? <laughs> Be right Works back. Me. Yeah. So, um, 
I had my eyes open a little bit, uh, like I said, when I was out. Uh, I went out on Thursday. Me and Jordan went out on Thursday, met up with Isaiah, fucking Cody, and our friend Chad, um, and Isaiah's girlfriend, Jenna. And we watched the Thursday night game at uh, a Wob, World of the Beer, you know what I'm saying? And so I was a little... I think surprised is probably apt, not just not unpleasantly, but was surprised to see the immediate reaction from Cody and Isaiah that they were not as immediately opposed to uh, the credit card idea as I was, you know. And I think after we discussed it a little bit more, they were a little more on the same page, but um, I didn't ask for their final thoughts on it. So I don't want to misrepresent anything that they may feel, but it seemed that after I kind of pleaded my case a little bit more, they understood, not understood because I don't want to make it seem like they didn't know, but um, it seemed like we were a little more on the same page. Um, but then we also talked about like the high capacity magazine concern that I talked about last week. I'm talking about um, Cody and Isaiah, not, being immediately opposed to the credit card thing like I was. I And like I said, I mm-hmm. felt like after we talked about it, they were a little more on the same page as I was, but I didn't ask for their final thoughts. Um, but then we talked about like the high-capacity magazine thing. And Isaiah's mm-hmm. from California, and he was talking about – I was just – I was pleading my same case that I did last week, you know, being able to buy stock magazines and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And Isaiah was saying that in California, if you buy a gun online, you have to check that you're – or it's, you know – it knows that you're in California and mm. it comes with a California magazine that is 10 rounds. That makes sense. So, yeah. And so I don't know if every gun comes that way, if they have to be manufactured that way, or if only certain guns come that way. I don't know um, because I didn't explore that because I don't live in Washington or I don't you, live in California. Yeah. So I didn't consider it. Um, like I think we, in, I said when we talked about it last week or a week before. Last week. Last week. Like, I wouldn't doubt that manufacturers make those some way already, you know? Because we we were talking about having certain industries have to switch over. Oh, shit. Yeah, it does. No, I'm not, I don't care. Yeah, you're going to get super no, hydrated right no, now. No, that's fine. I totally forgot Two to about three that. times as hydrated. <laughs> um, no, that's fine. I just, when I tasted it, I was like, I think there's something in here. So, I just wanted to know if you didn't put one in here, then your water is fucked up. But, Something's funky. But there was something in here. So, that's just Check. fine. Um, yeah, so, I would imagine... Um, in some cases, it, it is as simple as just putting a magazine that only accommodates 10 bullets, you know, 10 cartridges instead mm-hmm. of 15 or whatever the fuck, you know? Yeah. But I also have to imagine that in some ga- in, in some guns, it's not going to be as simple as just putting a shorter magazine in there. And there oh, would yeah. have to be a redesign of the gun. Yep. I can't speak professionally. I am not a designer of a gun. I am not a gunsmith. I'm not an engineer, you know? Given um, how many gun manufacturers there I are, we'll I think that. it would be a safe assumption that not everybody is capable of making a change like that yeah. if they don't do it. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, yeah. But I'll maybe I'll do a little bit more research. Especially as a manufacturer, you got to think like, well, okay, well, if this state goes rogue on us and doesn't allow us to sell, we could still survive and do just fine right. not selling to that state. So right. we can maybe work ourselves out of it. Um, so I want to do, because I think we, we just kind of shift off of We're the, moving on. Yeah. Um, what you got next? Over big dog, just in general, over those two episodes and just over the last few weeks, I and I don't know what it was that made me start to notice this, but it's the it's the terrible quality of content that seems to be coming from all of our major media institutions. Um in particular, that I feel is just getting to the point where I don't understand how anybody takes anybody seriously anymore. I mean, everything from, you know, there was a, I saw a tweet from, I guess, one of the press secretaries at the White House um, tweeting to CNN about how they had screwed up a a picture during one of their little, you know, things about the Hurricane Dorian. Yes. And they had mislabeled, um, I think it was Mississippi and called it, 
Arkansas or Alabama or something like that. And she called him out on it. And then the fucking CNN snapped back all bitter. It was like, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, we we have found that problem. We recognize it within 30 seconds. Took action to fix it. You know, why don't you, you know, it would be nice if you could do the same. And I was like, guys, I mean, first of all, that's snarky and stupid. But yeah. I have a problem with, I think that was CNN they were talking to. I have a problem that something, that little mistake, it seems dumb and minute, but it's so aggravating to know that a massive media company like that, that's supposed to be objective and thoughtful about what they do and like all this stuff can make stupid little mistakes like that. Yeah. It really bothers me. I understand everybody's human, but God damn it, you need to be better than that. Right. And everything from the daily... NPR, you know, the the shit show that has been the presidential debates, every single one of them, it's like, how do you guys not understand how to run a live recording? <laughs> it's it's it boggles the mind that I feel we've gone backwards in quality as we've gone further into the future. It's like oh, all certainly. these little things. Certainly. What is fucking wrong with the state of media today? Like it's so bad there's yeah i can't read a new york times article anymore or a washington post article anymore without having to fact check it yeah like there's nobody left and it is so there's people are better than others and it's not that they're just to clarify right it's not that they're reporting lies but in most cases they're reporting something with not like every element that goes into it right and yeah, that's part selectively of, reporting yeah and that's part of what that's i mean mostly what got us here on this podcast right yeah. is is for us to read something from the new york times and then go over and read something from fox news or from the daily wire so that we can get the other you know two or three pieces that were left off of that to make it a more appealing to one side right and it's not horrible, right? And I just want to say that because I, I want to be clear that the New York Times, it can still be used as a valid source for facts, right? But you are not by any means going to get the entire story from reading the New York Times. There mm-hmm. is going to be things that get left out, right? Yep. I have a subscription to the New York Times. I read New York Times articles all the fucking time, partially because I have that subscription, right? And I don't get blocked out because we have the fucking subscription, but – yeah. But it it is something, like I said, where you're not going to get every piece of the story. That's a good place because it's such a huge media organization. They have so many reporters. They're going to get to stuff first. They're going to get it quickly. They're going to get a lot of information. They have the resources to do yeah. what people can't, which is why but they existed in the first place. But it's always worth checking an article from the other side, and it's always worth going back two or three days later to read another article to see what else has come out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because certainly if you're putting a story out 30 seconds after something happens, there's going to be some shit that gets missed, whether it's something that's being misreported on purpose, on accident, or it's just something that hasn't come out yet factually. There's something that that it's going to be missed, you know? Um, so that's – I didn't want to interrupt you. I just want to be clear, you know, that that it still can, can it be can valid, be good. But there are pieces you're missing there if but, that's all you're taking in, you know? Yeah, and that – and this is – okay, so this is all just – label this as this is my subjective opinion at the state of the media the way i perceive it from reading these things it's like i can't get anything without a narrative anymore yeah that they don't even try to hide you know there are there are a lot of facts that get put out there as fact but are misrepresentative due to their context yeah and it's just it's become lazy and and I'm trying to figure it out. I, I wanted to say it was on Rachel Maddow on MSNBC or something like that. Um, they had on, I want to say a week or two ago, it was a guy that was making allegations that, uh, oh. that Trump was being co-signed by Russian oligarchs. Yeah, for loans. And they fucking reported it as if, as if it was fact. Had him on live television talking about this whole said thing. he had one single source uncorroborated right so yep. one person who was on like either background or deep background which means that they either know 
can report the field that they work in or they can't report anything at all about them, just that it's a source, right? And then it turned out to fucking not even be true. Not even. And Anything. they ran for the for days. Yep. They, and then they didn't, had to, yeah. They didn't run Sorry. a redaction or they ran a redaction. They didn't publish a correction. So they just fixed the article a little bit and changed the wording yeah. and made it work and then just didn't say anything. And that it. dude apologized and said yeah. that he reported something he shouldn't have reported. But the fact that that, I, I think you're correct, right? And not to steal your point, but I think the fact that that is able to happen let alone allowed to happen on you know what they're arguing is the cornerstone of you know modern media and is the fucking whatever i don't mean you know cnn or msnbc is that's Mm -hmm. you know one of the big five or four you know one of the major yeah what people would call mainstream media you're letting people i mean you first of all you shouldn't even have that dude on right if if you have a dude that's on there if you cannot independently corroborate it and it's not one of your reporters and you're not and you're comfortable enough with just taking their word for it yeah that's irresponsible yeah and then to have someone on there who's going to share something that is an unvetted fact, right? Or an unvetted reporting. And then you're going to just run with it like it is the truth, mm-hmm. right? That's, I mean, that in itself should, should disqualify you from any type of legitimacy in most people's eyes in America, you know, mm-hmm. if not everyone. I mean, even if you're fucking watching MSNBC every day. When you see that they have now had someone on there who's just lying, you know, or I guess maybe not lying because of the time he thought it was the truth, you know, yeah. but reporting things that are not vetted, like <laughs> that's a that, concern. Like is that you, textbook fake news. Like you, <laughs> like I, like in the talk in the actual context, he's reporting something that's not factually true as fact. Yeah, that is a le- and it's not. Like is that by type of thing does news. not happen all the time. Yeah. It's mostly speculation and narrative that I get pissed off about. But that technically, I think, was a, a case of fake news. And it causes you or can cause you, I think, reasonable concern as to whether or not it's happened in the past. Mm-hmm. And maybe they found out far enough afterwards that they just didn't fucking talk about it, you know? And I'm not trying to attribute malice, you know, in a place that maybe they just fucked up, Mm -hmm. but at least in my eyes, as someone who prides himself on his objectivity in relativity to the media, right, I that concerns me. If this happened right now, live on television, Rachel Maddow, what else have has happened like this that you have not talked about? If you've gone back, silently changed the article and not discussed it, how many other times has that happened where I've read an article mm-hmm. and it's been different a week later and I didn't go back and read the same article because I assumed at the time that was the case, you know? Like, that's that's concerning, yep. you know? And it's it's just a failure to fulfill your role. I mean, that's a failure to do your job correctly. Yeah. You're not – I mean, you can exist in this political entertainment newsy style thing that we have created, but you need to, like – Make sure you separate yourself from like a an objective neutral news network, right? At that point, and because uh, otherwise, you're just tarnishing your reputation every time you do one of these things. And you, we wonder why there was a rise in this thing we call alt media. Yeah, because there's an there's obviously a market for it. There, you know, some of it obviously is garbage that people just hear what they want to hear and say what they feel and present it as fact, but. You know they're not they're not the New York Times they're not CNN the the you know the nation's trusted name in news or whatever their slogan is it's like you need to be better you need to be better Speaking if you want of, to be taken seriously sorry. at all no I absolutely agree um, because I think that I think you're right and I think people not taking them seriously like you said has led to a rise in what they're calling alt media in new yeah. media right in new media people like us in Ben Shapiro in Dave mm-hmm. Rubin and people who are reporting things that are people who have other daily podcasts that are good that are fucking fresh yeah. you know even oh. people like uh f- Steven Crowder Pod Save America mm-hmm. you know things like that that are starting up right so I listen to two other podcasts because you were talking about people who are speaking ideology and then saying that it's fact right have you ever listened to matt Locke? no i don't think so, so. i listen to me he's because i'm looking for new conservative podcasts to listen to so matt Locke, i listened to that one um and he just 
fucking screamed the whole time um, <laughs> and i didn't like that and no. then i listened to another dude i think his podcast was called dear america it is graham allen graham allen no nope. yep this dude okay that one wasn't good either right um <laughs> madlock said his fucking his like new hat is a microphone with spikes on it because he's just beating the liberal media over the head every day with his microphone but he's unbiased. But he's an unbiased, unbiased podcast, and that's why he's doing that. But he's beating the liberal media over the head every day with his microphone. Hey, that's that's part of the reason. Like, I haven't listened to Ben Shapiro at all this week. Yeah. Because he's in his own libs phase right now, and I don't have time for that. It's tough. It's just, at least he markets himself as a conservative network you know so he's yeah it's built into the you know it's baked into the cake as they say on this same episode of pod save america where i was talking about that i was talking about earlier when they were talking about trump and you know mm-hmm. whatever they also interviewed iona presley um <laughs> on the back end yeah and she said she was calling for the ending of ice because we are oppressing immigrants by separating families um and then compared that to taking native lands um, and selling slaves that those, you know, those were all different ways in which we were oppressing these people. Um, and well, good for Ayanna Presley. Yep. She's and ice is just a, a, a tool with which is being used to oppress immigrant communities. Mm. Mm. It sounds like a line right of her standard talking point. You should listen to that one. Okay. You're just you're trying to raise the blood pressure. It was a long <laughs> interview with her, too. It was oh, tough. Boy. It was tough. And it was yeah, it was probably short, but felt really long. <laughs> uh, it was possible, yeah. <laughs> she maybe, she talked, like, the whole time. Like, they asked very few questions, and she mm-hmm. just went and covered, I think, probably everything they were going to ask about anyway. So, oh, maybe fuck, that's man. why it felt so long is because she talked so much. Yeah. Which is, I mean, she there she's b- being interviewed. So, it's not like, that's not shut the fuck up, Ayanna Presley. But, yeah. yeah, like, she, I don't think she was asked that many questions, really. Like, it was, she was just Well, there's a going. delicate balance to, like, that interview, you know, flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, it's kind of weird because, yeah, as like a host or an interviewer, you just kind of let them talk because they're talking. That's fine. But at some point, you kind of want to have some back and forth conversation, not yeah. just monologue. But I apologize to Isaiah on Thursday for when he came on just for having spoken so much and mm. like that he didn't talk more. And um, that's, but that's why people on our show are guests. There you go. <laughs> they are not, um, you know, whatever. They're not interview subjects or anything like that. They're guests. They it, can speak yeah. as much as they exactly. want. Exactly. But or they can just hang out and or they can shut the fuck the up and let us talk. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. Um. So you reminded me earlier when you said we were talking about new media. Yes. Um. Dave Rubin is back from his annual off the grid. Yes. Right. And he announced that uh, a couple of things. Uh, the first major one was uh, he, they got a they struck a deal with Blaze TV, Glenn Beck's network. Of course they did, and so it'll ju- it's just a distribution thing. So basically, he still has a hundred percent control of what he does and all this, that, and they just distribute it. But he's going to be on TV, on Blaze TV, oh. whatever that is. I think I think it's a mostly online. Thing. Yeah, I bet you there's um, a channel, but yeah, when Glenn Beck is a really interesting guy to listen to now, if he's right, the work. If he's with the right person. Yeah. If he's on his own, it gets a little weird. But, you know, every time he and Dave have talked, they've that's been a good conversation, which is nice. But uh, that and they have a new hire, uh, a, a, a man by the, a young man by the name of Kyle Keshiv. Kesh- Kyle Keshiv? Uh, yep. Works they for Dave Rubin him. now? Yep. What does he do for Dave Rubin now? Oh, uh, he is a kind of a media type dude. I, I forget the exact. Does uh, he have a show, or he's just? No, no, no. He's like a. He works for his broadcast department. Oh, say now. okay. Yeah, if words. You know, of the he like works the five the or Dave six Rubin employees show. he has. Yeah. Well, he's, that guy uh, got boned out of going to college. He did. Um, so and it, I know. it ended up like Dave was like, yeah, somebody should do something for this kid. And I mean, yeah. he's he's obviously a smart guy. He likes he's good at you know being. Well, he was going to go to Harvard, I think, and he got yeah. boned out of going to Harvard. So he's yep. obviously intelligent. Yeah. And so fucking Dave hired him. So now he's living in L.A. working for Dave Rubin. Interesting. Uh-huh. That's very interesting. 
Yeah, and Dave's his new book has got to be out. I think it's out now for pre order or out now. But, oh, I might have to pick that up. Yeah, that'd be interesting to hear what his what's to, it like, about? Read his writing style. Shit or uh, you know, I'm not totally sure. I've been off the Dave Rubin wagon for kind of a while. You got a goofy ass voice, Dave Rubin. Oh yeah, sounds like a cartoon character. He does. Yeah, I he. I kind of have a smaller problem with him, which I think he's What's your more beef with Dave Rubin. He's, he's he's too tied up in the wrong things. He's he's got the Owen Benjamin problem, not as severe, obviously. Owen Benjamin is kind of off the deep end. Yeah, but uh, you know, because Owen Benjamin was he's a comedian, mm-hmm. um, that amazing stand-up comedian that just kind of got too active, and he's been working with Crowder and stuff for a long time, and so, but he's just. He's kind of stepped away from like his career as comedy and a whole lot, and then he's been just involved in the the culture wars aspect too much. And I think Dave is too involved in the culture wars aspect of it, and not the like, the the marketplace of ideas anymore. Yeah, you know, and you know, he makes a shit ton of corny jokes, which I he continues to make them all the time. Yeah, which I thought was great for a while. It was like dad jokes all the time, but then it's just it's getting old. We you know were, I mean? we were, I, I agree with that because there's less and less episodes of Dave Rubin that I listen to as time goes on for that reason, because they just don't feel as relevant to whatever, Yeah, you know, um, and yesterday we went to Costco and there was a guy who went to return his cart and this woman took it from him and he was like, Oh, here, like you can take this one. And he said, but if you fill it up, it costs a lot. Yep, dad joke as fuck. It's quiet. It wasn't a good joke, but it was dad joke as fuck. Dude, that's great. This one works good, but if that you fill it up, deep. it costs a lot. That's yeah. too funny. Yep. It was a cart. It was this cart, so everyone <laughs> gets it. Because if you fill it up with groceries, it costs a lot of money. Anyway. Uh, have you been listening at all to uh, The Portal? I have not. Oh, I have dude. not listened to it. Eric Weinstein, bro. How, how can you get enough of Eric Weinstein? Because so I good. listen to so many news podcasts. It is fucking... Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. No. Yeah, no, I get you. It's tough sometimes. Yeah, that's become one that uh, doesn't drop necessarily on the reg, um, but when it does, it's mostly every two weeks, yeah, kind of thing. Um, but he just had on Rabbi Walmack of the Mount Sinai L.A. Temple thing, uh, same guy that's been on Dave Rubin before, and I think he's he's been on Shapiro, I think, a couple times or something like that. But yeah. That, but that was a – I listened to it twice. It's two and a half hours long, and it is just amazing. you know. And that's kind of what really got me thinking about these institutional failures. You know, Eric Weinstein's concerned that all of our institutions, all of our historical institu- institutions from colleges to finance to, you know, universities – yeah, which I already said, um, you know, everything is just crumbling. Media, news, all of it. And that just kind of got me thinking on that. But that is highly recommend. I think there's only five episodes out. But it's fucking worth it. Eric Weinstein. Yeah, he's... I would love to have an episode with him and his brother Brett. But the first episode was Peter Thiel, who oh, yeah, was I remember fascinating. You that. And then he had a, a German director on who <sighs> makes these crazy movies. Um, which was just interesting because it's all about film and stuff like that. And then yeah. there was another like economist professor that was on. And then this last one with the rabbi was on. And he did one kind of mini episode by himself, which was really yeah. good. Highly <clears throat> recommend. Do you have something next on there that you like another topic you want to hit? And then we can into sports and stuff like that. We can also, I have like a bunch of pop culture, just movies and shit that I watched. If you want yeah, to talk about some of these let's movies. Let's do that. Cause so. the other major one I had was Brexit, but that's a fucking long winded topic. So which is yeah, I have confusing. I've just been building up like lists of shit that I've mm-hmm. watched. Um, because we've been watching, especially like when we took two weeks off and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know if you have like any lists of things that you've watched or. Well, I, you know me, I don't fucking watch anything ever almost. Um, so here um, is. But I did go see a new movie. What did you go and see? So, uh, Carolina really wanted to go see Spider-Man. In and which just one? due to the, the, Into the far Spider-Man. from home. Oh, oh, that yeah. one was good. Jordan and I went and saw that. That yeah, one was good. It was good. But I fucked up, Uh-oh. and we missed it before it was out. Oh. But then a week later, Asshole. the extended edition was out. 
So we went last weekend. And Extra watched, scenes and yeah. shit. We watched the extended edition of Spider-Man Far From Home. What did she think? She fucking loves it. Yeah. Be, of course. You know, and I did too. It was fucking great. Yeah. You know, there was some little things that kind of bugged me, but I don't even remember what they are now. So they were so insignificant. I mm-hmm. shouldn't have let them bother me. I it was just a point. great movie. Um, new Dan at work, right? I got to find out this guy's last name because, but I talked to him this week. I don't know. We, I like new Dan. We bonded again over, I told you we bonded originally over Tell Him Steve Dave. He yep. likes Tell Him Steve Dave. And then Did I he saw, already listen to that? Yes. That's, He's the only okay. person I've ever met personally mm-hmm. that previously listened to Tell Him Steve Dave. He's like an OG Tell Him Steve Dave listener, like from the beginning. He's been around oh. for a long time. So, um, we, Bonded again over comic books because I saw an extended trailer for the Dark Phoenix movie, which looks really good. Yeah. So I was like, hey, Div, you know, fucking Dark Phoenix and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I haven't watched any of the X-Men movies since the first three because they were so bad that I can't force myself oh, to word. do it. And like, he's like super crazy heavy into comic books to the point that he's like, I don't even hardly watch a lot of these movies because I know that they won't be as good as the comic and I just don't want to fucking watch it. He said he watched all the Avengers movies because they were like so big. But yeah. won't watch the X Men. He's just not interested. So I don't blame we, him. So he brought me some books, which is really cool. Um, and I talked him into watching The Boys because we started watching The Boys. Um, so good. And that's based on a comic, and so he has those that he's looking for. He's going to bring. Is that to actually me. based on a comic? Yeah. Oh yeah. shit. Um, and so he. That's it's so good because it's like the anti comic book. Yeah. And right. So he told me that he hadn't watched that because that comic was so incredibly good that he didn't want to watch the show. But then he went home after we talked about it and binge watched like five episodes of it and he said it was really good. good. So good, good, um good. he also told me that the guy who did I am pretty sure it is um Alan Moore, right? So let's see the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I love um, that crappy movie. But the comic. Yeah. Right? So the person who did the comic. Alan Moore. It is Alan, Alan Moore. Moore. Right. So Alan Moore also did like V for Vendetta. Oh. And like another one did like the comics that all these movies are based on. Right. So he said that he didn't watch those movies. He watched V for Vendetta, but not Leave for Extraordinary Gentleman because I, and I don't really know V for Vendetta that well. I don't know how well you know. Right. But I know the movie the, very well. Yeah. Yeah. So the cop that's following them around the whole time, mm-hmm. apparently there's a scene where that woman, woman, right. Um, is like tripping on LSD, like in a concentration camp, like at some point in that comic. Right. And then, um, and that's obviously not in the movie. Um, yeah. And so he, I think, he's, I think it's a dude in the movie. So yeah. So but yeah. whatever it is. But um, yeah, that definitely doesn't happen. And then in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he said that when they introduced the invisible man, he's like raping young girls at a Catholic school. Like that's how his character is introduced to the comic. It's like, so I didn't even see that shit because there's no way you're going to put that in a movie. And he's like, and and to him, he feels like it's important to, not that he's like, you got to be raping young girls, but because he just feels like that's an important element to the character and like the development and all that shit. Yeah, it makes him scuzzy. Yeah. They did a okay job with him, at least portraying him as kind of just a general asshole that's super creepy and stuff. But apparently it's like really bad. But that's... Oh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Um, no, like, like, oh, the, uh, the creepiness of that character is like really, really bad. Like, it's and like worse than that. And you could do that in like a book or a comic, but you can't do that on TV. Right. Cause it's, it's highly uncomfortable right. when you see it on TV. It's just too real versus you need that depth of character sometimes. And, and it, it just works in comics and books and it just doesn't transfer over to the screen. Yeah. Cause that, that person instantly becomes the most evil thing on the face of the planet versus, and it's, it's, I don't know. It's just different in books. Just different. Yeah. So he said that he had watched that. He hadn't watched that um, because of that, but he brought me a couple of books. He brought me one that's called the Manhattan project. That's about the Manhattan project, but like a comic reimagining. Oh shit. Warner Von Braun has like a robot arm and shit. And that's like, dope. Yeah. So I'm excited to read that one. That's going to be really cool. Um, and then brought me an Alan Moore run of the Swamp Thing that I have heard nothing but Ooh. amazing things about. So that will be really cool. Um, we watched shit. I have it somewhere. You know what I'm saying? It's I don't remember if I talked about it before, but we have been been getting back into like old school animes. 
Yeah. And uh, we discovered, because Carolina's, yes. like, one of her favorite childhood animes was Sailor Moon. Right. And they just right. remastered that, and it's on Hulu. And so we've been slowly watching that. But then I discovered this thing called Dragon Ball Z Super. Okay. Which, I've heard about it, but yeah, I have not watched it. Which I didn't realize because in the Dragon Ball anime universe, there's like, there's the original Dragon Ball where the main character is kind of a kid and slowly grows up. And then there's Dragon Ball Z where he's just <laughs> where an, he's adult. an adult. Right. And then there was this thing called Dragon Ball GT. Right. Which was like, they're all older and it's crazy. Except and it's, for it's Goku because he gets turned back into a kid. Yeah. And so. I watched that one. But I anyway, that's. on VHS, that whole series. But this new one, this Dragon Ball Z Super, just like the like what Disney did with Star Wars, they made Dragon Ball GT not canon anymore. So that's not real. What? That's fake now. And the how did they write that episode, out? Is it just a dream or something, or it just doesn't? It just doesn't exist anymore. That's the thing. <coughs> Boo! Right. That was like a really good little fucking series, Dragon Ball GT. That and was I've, cool. I've never really seen all of it. It was so. cool, but I'm Boo. going to the. Uh, but now this new one, Super. It literally, the first episode of the season is a continuation of Dragon Ball Z. It just, it like really? goes, just yeah, it's going? like last or previously on Dragon Ball, whatever. And it just fills you in on basically like the last season of Dragon Ball Z. And then it just keeps going. It's Where wild. did you watch this at? Uh, the Funimation app oh. on the PlayStation. But then I just, I'm probably not going to keep that app. So I'm going to get rid of it. And it's, a, just, it's a subscription app. You pay for it. Yeah. And I mean, it's just, there's not enough on there to pay seven bucks a month for me. Yeah. No. So I just, I found it on Amazon. I was like, all right, I'll buy that season. Word. But there's like fucking eight or nine seasons of it already. I was like, damn, where have I been? Yeah. <laughs> Living under a fucking rock. I've I heard guess. people talk about it for a long time, but I haven't. Um, I went to watch Dragon Ball again, like on Hulu, but they only had it like dubbed and yeah. I'm just not, or subbed, you mm-hmm. know, and I just don't want to, maybe that's like super white of me, you know? I'm and the same way. In the anime community, people were like, that's fucking bullshit, but I just don't want to have to read it. You know? I know. Like, that's not where I'm at with my life. Because if I'm going to watch that, I'm going to watch it in the morning by myself before Jordan and the, and the baby are awake. So, I don't want to have to read it. I want to be able to listen to it because that's the very few times that I can. Or I'm going to watch it on Sunday while I'm at work. And I can't be standing there fucking reading the whole time. I got to yep. be listening. You know what I'm saying? I don't eat, I don't even have that much of an excuse. I just am like, yeah. Eh. I, I just, I'm just not interested. People just, you know, they like shit on that because they're like, it's not as good if it's fucking, you know, yeah, dubbed the, over. It's I'm the like, fucking the anime shit. purists, man. I don't, yeah, I don't, that. I don't care. About I don't that. care. That's no, <laughs> it's just <laughs> right. it um, So I do have a bunch of movies here that I watched. Um, I finished the Pacific a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, um, and I watched this robot movie on Netflix. Um, that's like a Netflix original. That's called like. Mother or some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, mother. No? Ass. Ass. It was like really good until the end. And it had That's like, what it sounded like. Yeah. Super fucking awesome idea. Amazing idea. Huge fan. Then they screwed it Terrible. up at the end. Yeah. They fucking really, Game of Thrones did. Really not a fan of that. <laughs> um, and then I watched... I watched The Man Who Shot and then shot Hitler. Um, Jungle, I went back the movie with Daniel Radcliffe that we talked oh, about. Yeah. I went and I watched that again. Um, and so that movie's based on a true story. Oh, shit. Um, and the dude, <clears throat> Daniel Radcliffe, spoiler, still totally worth watching, even if you know the end, right? Um, he f- spends like a, just a ridiculous amount of time in the jungle by himself and like hallucinates and like almost dies and all this shit. And then, you know, off chance, I'm sure it's like hyped up, you know, for dramatic. Is he like, lost in the jungle? Yes, okay. they go out to look for like they follow a guy who they meet. He's let me fucking start here, right? Do it. He's adventuring by himself in South America. Meets a couple other people, and then they start to adventure together. And then okay. they meet a th- a fourth dude who says that he knows about like these secret group of Indians, and like you know, I've been oh, up in the yeah. hills and all this shit. So he can, you know, they convince him to take them there. It's the so, shady dude. <clears throat> on the way there, they find out he really doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, and they're trying to raft down a river, and they all get separated, and it's all broken and fucked up and everything. And then he ends up by himself, Daniel Radcliffe, and the other guys get saved. 
One of them, two of them die, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, one of them gets saved. And then Daniel Radcliffe is by himself for like weeks in the jungle. And then he finally gets found. And, you know, it's, it's fucking crazy. It is like really, really fucked up what he went through. And then he survived and lived to tell the tale. And (sighs) that's wild. Yeah. It's obviously based on a book, you know, and I'm sure the book is like even more fucked up. It's, Strikes me as a similar story to that book, I Got You to Buy, We Die Alone. Mm-hmm. It's, it's similar thing to that. When you read that, you're like, I don't even know how someone survived this series of events. And watching Daniel Radcliffe in that movie, you're like, how the fuck did you give – how did you even live to be found at the end? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Because totally the jungle mean. tries to kill you at every second. He at one point – um, and I don't know how much of this is true or just for the movie, you know, because I haven't read the book. I just watched the movie. But at one point, he has this growth on his forehead that he thinks <gasps> is just like a, you know, whatever. And then it moves. Oh, one nope, day. nope, 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 yeah, nope. Yeah, and he has to cut his head open and pulls a fucking worm out of his head uh, in the middle of the jungle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really fucked up. Really fucked up. Uh, um. Then I watched Bone Tomahawk. Um, yeah. Watched a movie called A Special Relationship. Which was about Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. Oh, word. And like the personal friendship that they had and like personal strife. That was a really was like an HBO special thing, but it was like a drama. Um, fucking Dennis Quaid plays Bill Clinton. Oh, dude. Balling, bro. Balling. That is so cool. Yeah. Super good. Um, then I I've been watching Love Seinfeld Quaid. lately. Oh, right. um, which Shane Cleveland actually told me that I would like Seinfeld because I was telling mm. about some stupid ass conversation I had one time that was a conversation about nothing, and he was like, "Oh, you, have you ever watched Seinfeld?" And I was like, "No." And he That's said, "You should." He said, "It's a show about nothing." He yep. said, "You probably really <laughs> enjoy that." Um, and then we watched. So, do you enjoy it? I do. I do yeah. like Seinfeld. I think that it's funny. I also was watching Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, which is a yeah. Jerry Seinfeld show, and just listening to him, like, talk on there. You know, his comedy is so fucking, like... It's, like, dry. Yeah. And it's, I... Yeah. Yeah. And it's I think so it's good, really though. funny. I, I do. love it. I enjoy it a lot. Um, and then watched The First Purge. Like not oh, the very yeah, like yeah, not yeah. the original movie, but the movie The First Purge, mm-hmm. which was good. I don't know if you've seen this movie. I've just um, seen the the original one. Yeah. So this is the fourth in the Purge series, but it's mm-hmm. called The First Purge, the story of the original Purge. So it's good until and again, spoilers, I'm just gonna fucking, you know, um it turns out that it's partially being used. So that the government can send out trucks into poor communities and kill people and lower the population. <laughs> so I'm like, so this is good until, uh, you know, this fucking like he horribly didn't, he progressive didn't message comes out. That's yeah. like, by the way, the government hates poor people and, you know, they're going to make up extermination tactics to just wipe them all out. So that stuff, it, it ruins so much stuff for me now. If that movie came out 20 years ago with that same premise, it would be a great fucking movie. Yeah. But just now that like politics is where it's at and like social politics is where it's at, it's like this is such a fucking. Uh, I, you know, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I, my about, I can't, can't, you know, there maybe was that's a, what I'll try and write my next blog post about. But there was, was a quote that I had written down from listening to that portal episode with the, with the rabbi. Yeah. He said, when people have no culture in common, all talk turns to politics and politics swallows everything. And I was like, word. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense right now. That's why everything is political. Yeah. Everything. It just, sign of the times. I also watched, um, True Grit, the new, the remake. Yeah. The remake of True Grit. Um, I feel I haven't watched it. You haven't I, watched I it. I hear good things. You watched the OG though. Yeah, I've watched. I've I've seen the OG probably thirty times. Yeah, it's a great movie. And I've never seen the original, but this one came across like you know on mm-hmm. whatever, and so I watched it while I was at work. Um, and this one was pretty good. I mean, and I'm I yeah. you know I, I saw heard like, great he, things um, about it, it even yeah. from the people that were like you know it. It's obviously very different from the first one, but right. it does it 
the, it hits the right points. It, and it this one scratches the right itches. This one being as good as it is, I'm sure the the original is fucking you know ten times as good. I mean, which you don't even have to see the remake to know the original is going to be better. But I'm sure that. It's much better, but this it's just different. Yeah, I'm not even much better. I'm sure that it's yeah. fantastic because this movie was good, yeah. you know. So, and I'm sure that when I watch the original, I'll be like, "Well, the remake was not as good." You're right, um, but well, I don't know. The thing about those is like, like they're old, dated movies. Yeah. So it's hard to like technically and all the stuff not be better. Right. It's just the nostalgia kind of like it's like, well, it's not the same. It's- yeah, but it's probably still a good fucking movie. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, I forget who the, who the who's in the cast, but it was a pretty all star cast, wasn't it? The the remake. Yeah. Um. Yes. Actually, I think I got IMDb. Fucking Matt Damon it. is in it. And, Matt Damon. Um. <sighs> oh, what's Jeff his name? Bridges. Is it Jeff Bridges? Yeah, I'm pretty sure is in that. Fucking um, love Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Yep, Jeff yep. Bridges. He plays. Yeah. And see. If you're going to have somebody play Rooster Cogburn, it is Jeff Bridges. He was really Perfect. good. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and, and then LaBeouf. Josh Brolin was fucking great in it. Oh, yeah. Barry he's he's Chom Chaney. Fucking Barry Pepper. Oh, yeah. Tiny little part, but he was fan-fucking-tastic. I didn't even yep. recognize him. Good old so Ned good. Pepper. And then this girl, too, the young girl, Haley Steinfeld, she was great. She did a fantastic job. Haley Steinfeld. She's obviously not a little girl anymore, as you can see uh, in her very sultry picture up top. But Little Dicky, Earth. Apparently, she's in a Little Dicky video. Will she go up to the top? Because she looks like she's pretty hot now. Um, she was really young. And so yeah. You know, that, so that, you that works. Yeah. Is there a Woody Harrelson um, movie? The Edge of 17? There you go. That's another guy. I can't get enough of his fucking Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson? I really? love Woody Harrelson. He's just, I don't know. He doesn't take himself too seriously, I don't think, anymore. And he can play, he's a very versatile actor, and he does a great job on Which pretty I much whatever he Which I think people didn't know does. for a long time. You know? Yeah. I think um, he was underrated for a very long time. Yeah, but he is very versatile. But this girl, Haley Steinfeld, she does a really great job um, in this movie. She's a good... A good little actress, you know, being super punky and fucking like, don't forget about me. And I'm like mad tough and shit. She's mm-hmm. good. She was really good. I, yeah. No, I liked it a lot. Is um, it weird to, to you that like on IMDb, the internet movie database, there's like a massive background ad for Gears of War 5, a yeah. video game? <laughs> I didn't even know that there was three or four of those. I knew oh, that really? there was two. Yeah, but I didn't know that the other ones had, had even been created. It's a small created. following in the Xbox community, but God, they are diehard. Loyal. Well, I mean, that's got to be one of the coolest weapons that anyone has ever seen. You know, that... Yeah, the, the chainsaw. OG, yeah, the rifle with gun. the chainsaw is fucking awesome. Money. Super cool, you know. Not like practical for everyday use, but you know, yeah, right. in, you know, inter. When you're hunting aliens like that, yeah, interplanetary, you yeah, interplanetary alien combat. It seems like an apt weapon. Well, I so. used I used to play this uh, tabletop, you know, turn-based war game called Warhammer. Yes, and uh, uh, in the Warhammer Forty Thousand universe, which is like kind of the same thing, but like way the fuck in the future. Um, they have a lot of like assault rifles with those fucking, or no, they have swords, but instead of like swords, they're fucking chainsaw swords. And that reminds me of a chainsaw sword on the bottom of a fucking machine gun. It's like, yeah. That is, that's harsh, bro. Well, and that's like, um, the that's only a heavy weapon. The only game I can quote him from because I don't know which Final Fantasy he's from, but in Kingdom Hearts, fucking, what his name is like, Leon, I think. And he's got a, he's got a gun. Or a, yes. an enormous sword that's also so a gun. gun. Yeah, that's from yeah. Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, there you go. I knew Which that. He they're was... remastering, I believe. Are they? Yeah. And I Final Fantasy really... VII Remaster is coming out. I wanted to say they put a release date on it now of like 2020 sometime. Are all Final Fantasy games turn based or only some of them? The fighting is guess... turn based fighting. Yeah. But then you're running around a map in free mode and, blah, yeah. blah, blah, you know, that kind of thing. But. Um, it's a very linear kind of progress, but yeah. there's, and I don't know, I haven't played a Final Fantasy game since nine. But they used to be. Yeah. And now I think there's a little bit more free roaming element to it. And But yeah, I'm not totally sure. I'm not a huge fan of turn-based um, 
like battle. You know, I don't really like turn based games. Yeah. That's not. I have to be shit. like in the right mood for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I want to play, like if I in the mood to play like a JRPG, which is the Japanese role playing games. <laughs> yeah. Which essentially if Final Fantasy is or the big one now. Kingdom is, Hearts. Yeah. Is, Kingdom Hearts yeah. is um, like I have to be in the mood for that because I know that's part of it. Yeah. And then I'll be down for it. But otherwise, I don't want that and when it kingdom stops hearts, the action yeah and kingdom hearts isn't turn-based and that's one of the reasons oh, i liked not. it no kingdom hearts is not turn-based and so Shit. i like that about it um but what was i it turn-based fighting gets predictable to me because you know how strong your attacks are and you mm-hmm. know like oh if i do this three more times then this is just going to be over and you're just like fuck like i just wish that this would be done you know yeah you know, really repetitive whereas when it's not turn-based there's like a little more skill to it whereas you're like i really have to be more conservative or more aggressive or whatever the fuck like mm-hmm. you have to tailor your fighting style i feel like a little more or at least like your active gameplay you know yeah. maybe that's disingenuous but i got like, really into these games called shadow run for a while and they are a totally turn-based game where even your movement and stuff is mostly turn-based. But then it's kind of like a top-down, um, <clears throat> like almost checkerboard-style map strategy, yeah. turn-based strategy thing. Yeah. And that, like, have you ever played XCOM or something like that? It's very similar to that. Or, you know, even Final Fantasy Tactics. And, right. You know, that kind of top-down, almost I, yeah, checkerboard type There was a thing. game I played on the PlayStation 1 that was like that i'm trying to remember what it was called um but that game i actually really fucked with i really liked it Mm -hmm. um but that's the only one that i've ever enjoyed was that one that i played played it in my dad's house so i played it for two weeks a year for like five years (laughs) so uh, so i cannot remember dad if you're listening to this if you can remember or if you still have that for whatever ungodly fucking reason, if you still have that PlayStation 1, I would love to know the game or the name of the game. You That's probably funny. only have four games if you still have it. Just tell me what all the names <laughs> of the games are and I'll be able to tell you which one it is. Yeah, I'll try and figure it out because I really fucked with that game. But yeah, I just I don't have the patience for a turn-based game. Yeah. I get that. But, I get that. Um, I think that's everything I have as far as pop culture. I watched an episode of The Shop today. Mm. Um, I watched... Oh, we've Is been it? watching Adventure Time, Dax. Oh, yeah. Um, Never gotten into that. It's, I feel like, a very, like particular group of like teenagers yeah. that got into it and if you weren't the, the right age at that time you weren't going to be into it um but dax will like the opening theme song and the ending theme song he's so obsessed with he will stop what he is doing to to watch it <laughs> like he'll be actively bouncing doing something not even looking at the tv and he'll hear it and he'll stop <laughs> that's and he'll watch it and he won't move for the 30 seconds that it plays and then right back to whatever he was doing. That's awesome. It is the weirdest fucking thing I have ever seen. He's like, no, 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 this is my part. Because, again, we don't like sit him in front of the TV, you know, but we have the TV on and our house is small. So he's like around it, but doesn't generally give a like, care about it. He just kind of, you know, moves on, does whatever he's going to do. But yeah, when he hears that song, either of those songs, he will just stop and stare at the fucking TV and just watch it. And I think that it's so funny, but it's so weird. That that so very funny. Weird. Yeah. But I think I think that's it as far as pop culture. The boys, we've been watching random movies. Oh, did you, you know? have you watched uh, Chappelle's Sticks and Stones yet? No, but I'm going to this weekend um, because. All I'm going to say is don't listen to any of the garbage you see on no, Twitter no. about how it is because it is one. Of, I think it's it's in my top. It's probably in my top two favorite stand up specials of all time. Really? It is so fucking good. It is so good. I can't get enough of that. Oh, that's awesome. Those little horns, little yeah. light up horns. Yeah. Uh, her stepdad, Leif, is in a band called Jaded Mary. And oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that is one of their like paraphernalia things. There's little glowing horns there. Like, I have a light on them. So we should, we can have them on here. We could have individual or group members of them on there. That's a thing. Do you know that we have uh, upwards of 30? YouTube subscribers now? 
Uh, yeah, totally. I totally have seen that because I've totally been all over posting the YouTube yeah. episodes, Donovan. So, which I am actively working on. That's a thing. It's just, it's the YouTube is a fucking thing. Yeah, and man, it is. If I don't, if I don't have two straight days a week, it just doesn't get done. People love our but videos. They do. I'll put in some. I'll put in some OT this weekend. Yeah. I People love our videos. Don't overwork yourself. I just wanted to just a reminder. Share progress with you really was what <laughs> that I is was. pretty dope. Also, thirty. Did you upwards of thirty? That's um, pretty badass. Did you get an email from a place called Cast Market? No. So I did. Maybe because I was the first person to sign up through Podcoin for our app or for our podcast, right? Uh But they sent me an email that um, they are Hmm. a third-party website where that is like another analytics website, right? Which indicated to me that at some point since the beginning of our podcast, we were on a rankings list – on Apple for yes. the social commentary um, yeah. category. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. At one point, we were ranked that was on one trigger. of those lists. Um, I don't know what the trigger was, but they this website indicated to me that at one point we were. And I didn't know that yeah. we were ever ranked at one point. But at some point, we had enough episodes that were receiving. Enough, and we may still be now. I don't know. But I know that at least at one point we were ranked on a social and commentary section of Apple Podcasts. So, dude, clap, clap to fucking Colin and I, to you guys. Thank you. Amazing fucking balls and bellas. Yeah. You guys are incredible because we are slowly growing. We are getting there. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's a thing. Well, Um, fucking, we have one episode. I want to say it was like 42. Or something like that. It's just it's a got baller. like a, a thousand listens yeah, or something it's like a that. Whatever. Yeah. But that is so dope. So now that we have uh patted ourselves on the back and <sighs> talked about some pop culture, we can <laughs> go to sports. Sports. So we will go with some NFL news first. We'll go over some news. Let's talk about Antonio Brown first, right? I told you about this in pre-show, but we'll go over it again for people who do not have their ear to the ground. So Antonio Brown was having problems with his helmet, right? That's like what precipitated all this, and he missed some practice. So what was the problem with his helmet? His I, helmet I didn't quite get this. The problem with his helmet was that his helmet was is now more than 10 years old, right? Mm-hmm. And for your helmet to be legal in the league, it has to be made within the last 10 years or else it's not safe enough, right? So he don't want to get a new helmet. So his new helmet, he felt like blocked part of his vision. He didn't like it. And then he couldn't find like the style helmet that he wanted. And so he said he wasn't going to play if he couldn't get this helmet. It was like a whole deal. So he wasn't going to practice. So he I missed get it, practice. But it seems right? so petty. Right. So eventually he found a helmet he was willing to play in and everything was cool. And then he got a letter last week from the manager of the league that said he was going to be fined $40,000, I think, plus like $25,000 for time that he had missed at practice, right? Mm -hmm. And so he posted a picture of this letter and put it up on his Instagram and was talking shit. The next day at a team meeting, Mike Mayock, who's the general manager, the GM of the Raiders, is there. He calls Mike Mayock a cracker and was talking shit and threatens to punch him in the face and is to the point that he has to be held back by teammates so as to prohibit this from getting Can't do that, physical, man. Right? So that comes out. And the next day, Mike Mayock is like, hey, we plan on suspending Antonio Brown. He's not going to play Sunday. You know, we'll talk about that later. The day after that, he's like, we're not suspending Antonio Brown. He apologized. Everything is cool. He's going to play on, or we're going to play on Monday. Everything is going to be rad, right? So then the, the day after that, Antonio Brown finds out that because he has received these fines, the team is going to take back the guaranteed money that he just got, which is just a little over $29 million, right? And that if he gets cut, he's not going to get the money he was guaranteed when he, if were he to be cut. So he's literally playing for the checks that he gets every week, right? The thing with these new contracts is they're being front loaded to get a bunch of guaranteed money. So your salary is just fuck all nothing, but you mm-hmm. received a bunch of it up front, right? Yeah. So it's Julio Jones just signed a contract that's three years, $66 million. 64 of it is guaranteed, right? 97% of his contract is right up front, which is like the highest percent. <sighs> 
of of anybody ever, right? I mean, is that um, just built off of like desperation trying to lock down some of these players? It's because he's like one of the best, and yeah, they Julio Jones and other players who want front loaded contracts are concerned about their safety. They know that they could take a hit and be done forever. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure they're getting their money. Teams are hesitant, obviously, because they could take a hit and be done yeah. forever, and now they've lost all this money. Yeah. So it's a a fine balance that they're still trying to find in this oh, okay. game. You know? Um, but when you have a player like Julio who has injuries but has still been able to play consistently, you know, he might miss like a game or two a year or whatever, but he still plays most of the time. He's still fucking incredible every time he's on the field. He's on the field, he's got to be double, triple covered, and he's still catching the ball, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, a sound investment still if you got him. Exactly. So there is, you know, there's a line that you kind of walk there. Um, so after Antonio Brown finds out all this money is being taken from him, then he says he's not going to play for the Raiders. I'm, fucking out. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing. I won't play on Monday. I won't anything. So the Raiders cut Antonio Brown. This morning, right, Sunday morning or Saturday, Saturday morning, morning, they cut Antonio Brown. Yep. When I got here today when we were recording, he signs with the fucking Patriots. That was, right? dude, hours, the turnaround. Hours go by and he signs with the Patriots. Just a few hours too late to play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The Patriots play the Steelers in their opening game. So he would be playing against his old team. <laughs> um, not the Raiders, but the original yeah, old team, the, original the Steelers, one. right? Um, so just a few hours too late to play tomorrow. But he'll play next week for the Pats, I'm sure of it. Which is just insane. That is um, so wild. Yeah. So the rest of the NFL news that we have here. And then we'll do our picks for next week. Because by the time that you guys are listening to this... You have heard and know whether or not our picks were good for last week. It's still Saturday, yep. so we both were good on Green Bay for this week. Yep. Um, but we will see what happens later this week. I feel real good about Kansas City now that uh, – fuck. oh, just kidding. They're playing fucking Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who the Raiders – oh, the Raiders are playing – Denver on Monday, and we both picked the Raiders. Yep. So we'll see whether or not that turns out. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> so, complicated things a little um, bit. The next one I have is the Chiefs signed Tyreek Hill to a three-year, fifty-six million dollar contract extension, um, which is less than he stood to make previously. But he got into you know all that shit with like. Um, you know, his kid showed up with a broken arm and then yeah. the investigations. And then we talked about that. You know, he ended up receiving no suspension and mm -hmm. what fucking nonsense that all was. Um, but given the way the NFL's been lately, I feel like that, you know, you should just be lucky to be taking it and moving on. Yeah, exactly. Because they could be a little meh lately. And that's why I think it got closed up is because, you know, he knows what's up. Yeah. Um, they also signed running back LaShawn McCoy to a one-year $3 million deal. LaShawn McCoy got cut. By the Bills earlier this week, um, Zeke signed a $90 million six-year fucking deal two years early, right? So he signed of just a stupid extension. Um, Isaiah and I have been trading information back and forth over Zeke because I said something to him that he thought was damn near blasphemous where I told him <laughs> that I felt like the Cowboys would have been okay without Zeke. Um, oh, they could find someone else and they would be just fine. That's that fucking I, fighting words. I huh? didn't feel like <laughs> the difference between us. Like, I don't think that the Cowboys are in a better position to win the Super Bowl this year. Now that Zeke is there than they were. Yeah. if He was gone. Yeah, I, don't I don't think, think that, that, that it makes a difference. And that's like what we're talking about, you know, is championships. And I don't think that that makes a difference this year or even next year mm -mm. of them doing that. So maybe more than just that. Yeah, that's. That's really what I was getting at, but we've been trading shit back and forth yeah, ever since funny. I said that. Um, so Zeke is now the highest paid running back in the league. Just a, yeah, I think it's like sixty million guaranteed, maybe fifty sixty million guaranteed. So stupid, stupid money. Um, the Rams signed Jared Goff to a four year extension worth one hundred thirty four million dollars, one hundred ten oh. guaranteed. So he's making fucking Jeez. stacks. The Colts signed uh, their quarterback Jacoby Brissett to a two year thirty million dollar deal, twenty guaranteed. They got to lock down uh, their starter now that Andrew Luck is retired. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vikings signed wide receiver Josh Doxson after he got cut by the Redskins. 
And he was a first round pick for the Redskins like two years ago. So and he just couldn't, just couldn't get it going in Washington. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with the Vikings. Um, he should, I mean, at least get some field time. <coughs> so we'll see what happens there. Was he right out of college when they picked him up? Uh, yeah, first round draft yeah. pick. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and sometimes, then, you know, the greatest college, the greatest looking college players just, they can't make that step up into, the, into yeah. the real pros. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's the scheme in Washington or, you know, if he just... Yeah, because it could the, just be not jiving but, with, with people and all that. Right. It could be a lot of different things, but that's always something that comes into my mind. It's like, well, maybe he was a fucking Tim Tebow. Well, and it's possible that there was just a lot of pressure on him because once Deshaun Jackson was gone and Jamison Crowder was gone, I mean, he was like one of the bigger receivers there. So yeah. once he's in Minnesota, you know, you have Stefan Diggs there, you have Adam Thielen there, there. You have Kyle Rudolph, the tight end there. Dalvin Cook, the running back, who's going to catch some balls. Like, There's other people there to take pressure off of him that I feel he might have more room to flourish now or show a little bit more of his skills since yeah. he's not going to be the main focus. Yeah, it won't be um, over-pressured. Yeah, so that's possible there. Uh, the Steelers, they signed their corner, Joe Hayden, to a two-year $22 million extension. The Panthers released wide receiver Torrey Smith. He used to play for the 49ers, and I think he played for the Eagles, too. Uh, the Bears signed their guard, Cody Whitehair, to a five-year $52.5 million extension, 27 and a half guaranteed. The Saints traded their linebacker, Vincent Bijan, um, yeah, and they received Kiko Alonso, who's a linebacker from the Dolphins. The fucking amazing linebacker out of Oregon, of course. Um, <laughs> he's fucking fantastic. The Dolphins look like they're trading away all their good picks because they also traded away their left tackle, Laramie Tunsil, to the Texans for a shitload of picks, including two first rounders and a second rounder. So, Laramie so Tunsil to build. was like their fantastic, fantastic left tackle. Yeah, they got rid of. So, yeah, I think they're going to tank. This year, and mm-hmm. they're looking to rebuild in the next couple of years. So we'll see what happens with that. That is all that I have as far as actual news. Um, let me just get to my closing lines here, and then we can do our picks for next week. So like I said, by the time you hear this, you guys will know how our picks turned out for last week. So let me go to week two. The games were super good, right, Colin? The Sunday games? They oh, were yeah, those were awesome. great. Watch yeah, them all. We, I, I totally kicked your ass in the pick them. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go with this week two. We have Buccaneers at Panthers. Um, I think I will take the Panthers in that one. I think I'll take Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. You think so, Carolina? Yeah. Uh, the next we have Cardinals at Ravens. I'm going to take the Ravens. Uh, it's in Baltimore, so I'm on to the Ravens on that. I'm picking one. Arizona. And after that is Chargers at Lions. Shit. Um, and I don't know whether or not Melvin Gordon will be playing for the Chargers. They told him that he could go, that he could look for a trade because they weren't. They told Melvin Gordon they were not going to discuss his contract during the season. Hmm. Um, and he said that he's not going to play if he doesn't get a new contract. And so they told him that he can go and try and look for a trade. So we'll see, you know, if he's playing somewhere else or if he's even there. So what are you thinking? That's L.A., right? Chargers. L.A. Chargers. Or um, Detroit Rock City. I'm going to take the Lions. Okay. I want the Lions on this one. This is good. We got uh, we got two against, one the same. Um, next is Colts at Titans. I'm going to go Titans on that one. That's not going to be a very good game. Mm. But I think the Titans can win that one. Titans. I'm going to go Titans as well. After that is 49ers at Bengals. I think the Niners take that one. I think the Bengals are shit. Yep. Um, and that's who we play this week. That's who we play tomorrow is the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Seahawks play the Bengals tomorrow. And then Jaguars at Texans. I think the Texans take that one. Um, I'll just do the and, Jags. Yeah, I'll fucking I'll roll the Jags. Word, just, just cause. I think that Jalen Ramsey, the corner for the Jaguars, probably will shadow DeAndre Hopkins that game. So that's going to be a tough game. That'll be a good one to watch, though. Um, after that is Vikings at Packers. Man, um, I think I'll go Packers on that one. Okay, I'm going Minnesota. Word. After that is Cowboys at Redskins. That'll be a good one. I think Cowboys are going to take that one. At the Redskins? Yep, at Redskins. It's in Washington. Shit, I'm doing Washington. Word. After that is fucking Seahawks at Steelers. It's in Pittsburgh. 
I mean, do I have to say Seahawks? You don't have to. I'm going to. I think I'll go Seattle also. Okay. Um, after that is Bills at Giants. I bet we're going to be called a bunch of fucking homers. For- <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's like I is- almost just want to have enough faith. Yeah, I think they can do it, though. Um, and after that is Bills at Giants. I'm going to go Bills on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Buffalo Buff. Bills. Yeah. After that, Patriots at Dolphins. I'm going to go Pats on that one. Yep. Uh, Antonio Brown will play that week against the Dolphins. I bet he has a little fucking over 100 yards. Um, yeah, it's going to be stupid. Yeah. After that is Chiefs at Raiders. I'm going to take the Chiefs on that one. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, after the Saints at Rams, that is going to be a good fucking game. I think I'm going to take. I think I'm going to take the Rams on that one at home. Rams. Yeah. All right. I am gonna. I want to. I want to go with Nolans. That's going to be a really good game. I think so. Um, and then after that is Bears at Broncos. I'm going to take the Broncos. Yep. That Denver. one. Joe Flacco playing in fucking Denver now. <laughs> the Sunday night game is Eagles at Falcons. I think I'm going to take the Falcons on that one. Julio on his nice big contract. I think I'm going to take the Falcons. Against um, the Eagles? Against the Eagles, yeah. I'm going to do Philly. And then the last game, the Monday night game, is Browns at Jets. Dude. Oh, God. What a terrible game. Um, um, I want to do the Jets, but I'm going to go Browns. I think I'll go Browns on that one. Yeah. Browns at Jets. I think I'm going to take the Browns. Browns in the win. away win. Yeah. So we are, I think last, yeah. So this, this past weekend, speaking in the future, uh, we had four differences and this one we got, uh, seven. So much, a much more diverse field. Nice. Of picks. I like that. So that is everything that we have this week for you. Uh, thank you, everyone who stuck around for this yeah. whole show. I know it's a long one. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate everyone for all the support. Like I said, you know, you're helping us get at the bottom of some lists on Apple Podcasts. And, um, you know, we're, we're picking up in subscribers and on YouTube. Um, you know, we're, we're going to get some more more videos going on YouTube. It's, you know, it's, it, it's busy. It's, it's hard out here. It's rough out here. Fucking hard out here for a pimp. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, I will say I am getting close to the, uh, the end of our quote unquote busy season at work. Yeah. So hopefully I won't be working 10, 12 hour days every day. Yeah. As I imagine as, as the winter turns down, yeah. um, things kind of ratchet down a little yeah, bit as construction winds down, you guys mm-hmm. wind down. So that's, that makes sense. I am um, looking forward to that day. Like you don't even know. We have our Halloween costume picked out. Um, oh, I, I always forget about we, fucking Halloween. Well, nowadays. we have a child now, so we have to do something. Yeah, right. Um, we are going to be, Jordan and I are going to be Jack and Sally from Night Perfect. Before Christmas, and he is going to be Oogie Boogie. There's <sighs> like, Oogie Bug. yeah, yeah, there's a costume that Jordan's sister is um, crocheting. Oh, um, that's perfect, too. Nice, soft, yeah. you know, stuff, and you, it's just, just like a little burlap thing look at that that's perfect isn't that the cutest fucking thing you've ever seen in your whole life uh it's not because that's not dax <laughs> but when it is him, <laughs> isn't that so fucking cute though that is so perfect yeah so he's gonna so be good. this is the picture that i saw so that's gonna that's perfect that so fucking cute that yep. is so awesome so he's gonna be oogie boogie and i'm gonna be jack and she's gonna be sally it's gonna be a wonderful i think i want to watch that movie tonight that's a great I movie. Fucking love That's that movie. That's a great movie. Nightmare Before Christmas is a great movie. If I even had to say it so that you knew what we were talking about, then fuck you. <laughs> That's a great movie. But thank you for listening again. I want to thank you. You can find us our personal social media so you can hear some more of us individually throughout the week. I am at Salt of the Street on Twitter and at Alpaca underscore Don on Instagram. He's at Big Bird Offy on both of those things. You can find us at Salt of the Street on Twitter at Salt of the Streets on Instagram. We have our Facebook at Salt of the Streets, our YouTube at Salt of the Streets, follow our videos, and you can find everything that I just said on our website, saltofthestreets.com. It's awesome. With that, we are going to get out of here. And, man, I'm wondering if you can help me buy some supplies because I just can't afford it because the Fleshlight maxed out my $200 limit <laughs> on my credit card. <laughs>